Hallelujah. Somebody, wherever you're joining from, you're welcome. By divine invitation, you are here today. <laughs> By divine providence and divine preservation. Hallelujah. Of destiny. And the planner, the master plan of all things. The one on whom all things rest, in whom all things were made, and without which nothing was made that was made, has caused it and has found it very pleasing unto him that we will be here today by the leading of the holy spirit glory to jesus hallelujah to fulfill that which he has said about you that which he has reserved and preserved unto your revelation alone for you to seek for you to find for you to knock and it shall be open unto you so today we open and we dissect through the word of God by the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. In the books of Genesis chapter 37, as you can see, ah, God's plans are not usually the plans of man. God's plans are not usually, are not usually as synchronizing as, as our canal and our normal expectations. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God's plans are not the perfect plans that you and I may be expecting or onlookers or expectants. Hallelujah. God's plans are always mysterious. God's plans are funny. God's plans are funny. They are, they are, they are hidden from from the eyes of men, from our ordinary eyes. They are usually very, very 
<laughs> they are supernatural glory to jesus that's the word that's the mysterious word that's the biblical explanation to god's plans for us they are usually supernatural so we will release and seek the holy ghost the power of god the resurrection power that rose christ from the grave who is able to reveal all truth to open all portals glory to jesus that will minister to each heart everyone that will log on to this broadcast regardless of distance regardless of of time zone glory to jesus regardless of the situation and the condition god is away and even as you receive of this word right now be lifted up in your spirit in the mighty name of jesus oh be healed oh be hopeful god is faithful he doesn't change he doesn't he doesn't metamorphosize himself into something else that he's not <laughs> the bible says he's blessed his words above his name that which he has promised and that which he has said that which he has revealed that which he has revealed is unto deliverance unto redemption glory to jesus and that's why we are here to fellowship on the word of god the word of truth the word of faith glory to jesus the word of eternal life in christ jesus today that believe hallelujah today that believe and i pray for you somebody that you receive that grace to believe on the word of god because that is your portion that is your assignment glory to jesus that is a commandment of god that you believe and you receive his son who is the word in jesus mighty name thank you father glory to you oh glory to jesus so as we are here to the glory of god as we have seen again another day all to the glory of god as we have been called into this realm of of his presence because in the presence of god there is fullness of joy i pray that you will never be the same again glory to jesus that the spirit of god that has called on you that has beckoned you to live on every other thing that you would have thought was more important and you put god first to be in his presence right now and receive this word that is coming according to his purpose according to his plan and according to his will for you in the mighty name of jesus may you not fall on, on fertile grounds but you reproduce the cause and the purpose for which he was released for you your family your life your destiny and all it is well with you in jesus mighty name we bless the name of the lord we just lift our hands in worship we lift our hands lift our hands recognize that acknowledge his presence Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take over this atmosphere. Take over this podcast. Take over me. Fill me with your word as you have called and as you've invited, as you have kept me and put me right on this seat. And turn on this portal of your expression, expression of your glory, expression of your manifestation, expression of your power, expression of your love, expression of your holding and your redeeming word to somebody in the mighty name of jesus god knows you i don't know you i may not know your name i may not know what you are going through but the almighty one the monarch of zion who has preserved and kept you knows it all that's why he has called us in his presence yet again in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah oh we know that the spirit of god is life the word of god is spirit the word of god is life hallelujah we know that his word is his bond we know that his word as ye and amen we know that and if you don't know as you listen and as you receive i pray that as the spirit of god has gone out already he's already called ministers and holds your heart onto that which you are just receiving today which you are just knowing today glory to jesus and that you pick that word and run with it in the mighty name of jesus 
Thank you, Father. So we, we look into the word of, of Genesis chapter 37. The story of Joseph. Joseph the dreamer. Even in our days, you call yourself a dreamer when you dream a lot, when you have a lot of aspirations or too many ambitions. You are too ambitious for the liking of men around you. Maybe sometimes your own very close ones, familiar ones, your family and, you know, people who who, 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 who who you believe or you think that you are you have to impress or you have to to prove a point to them that you are here you are doing your best glory to jesus people who matter to you who people who mean anything in your life your family your wife your children your siblings your colleagues your neighbors whoever it is even strangers sometimes we always have this tendency of trying to upgrade ourselves trying to 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 get to a certain level just doing our best to, to get somewhere glory to jesus and we find that most of the times it's not for ourselves that we do these things most of the times we want to impress our legacy we want to set a footprint we want to 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 create something to just be known for our names to be written for our names to be talked about for us to be recognized man has that desire to be to be to be to be to be, to be decorated hallelujah to just be praised to receive praises hallelujah to be honored we have that that desire to 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 stand out to be to be the the best of the best glory to jesus i believe every man is created in that ability that's that nature to to want to show up hallelujah to show up and even if it's as small as as small as it is as tiny as as we can we want to make a print to make to make an impact glory to jesus sometimes we don't realize it sometimes we don't we don't know that that is what is actually going on we don't know that that is the impression that others are already see and we might not ourselves know that that is what is being um, expressed glory to jesus so from creation god created us in the likeness of him he is above he created us in his image imagine the image of god the almighty which is always the best right which is always required of the ultimate the the altitude the maximum the 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 the, the highest that is our nature as humans glory to jesus so it is not an error for you to desire to be at the top to be to be uh or the, or the most um, um sorted for the one that they want to 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 call to the one that they they, they need the one that is the best glory to jesus it's not an error to to have that that um the ambition of the mind the soul or the spirit as we might term it in our physical um, um, sights but at the end of the day it takes the power of god it takes the will of god it only takes the plan of god to maximize that ability Glory to Jesus. Not in our carnality, not in our fleshly ways, our fleshly um, targets, our fleshly limits. Glory to Jesus. Sometimes we will say, the sky is your limit. The sky is your starting point. The sky. God has no sky. <laughs> when it comes to you, God doesn't have a sky limit. He doesn't have a limitation. He doesn't have a, 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 a finite location or a, a, a drawing line 
to what his ability or in you can be so man's way of always expecting his best to surface to surmount everything else everyone else is still at the end of the day our own in our own capacity man's own but god's own is unlimited god's own is not within the sky is limits not within somebody gets me i know that i'm talking to children of god and i believe that you who has come on this water god has invited you here for the reason of that revelation to you that encouragement to you that support that you need that word that you need has finally come married to jesus and if we look at a particular story we can say the best story ever narrated in the old testament by a certain dreamer the greatest dreamer <laughs> his generations till the end of time will always speak about him because god used him god placed him in this timeline to to open us to his promises to his will to his plan which is the ultimate plan which is the only plan that can work for you and i glory to jesus god has always spoken through dreams through visions to true revelations that is the language of god the only way he can communicate with us most times from the time when um, 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 if we are going to the new testament you see how mary was visited she was visited by an angel in a vision she saw an angel appear to her that was in a vision meaning in a dream or it was not in the natural it was in the supernatural so most times our dream life is actually telling us what god has set aside what god has has kept for you what the perfect plan of god is not your plan not my plan not your parents plans not your 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 limited ambitions and desires within the ability of your physical physical capability of yourself but of that which god has created in you the engine in you each one of us has an engine has a special a special unique factor glory to jesus a special unique um, seed that has been planted in us glory to jesus and it takes only the one that planted that seed to manif manufacture it, to bring it to existence, to bring it to surface, to bring it to an expected end. Glory to Jesus. So that takes us again now to the famous and the popular scripture, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. It says, God's plans are to prosper us and not to harm us. Glory to Jesus. So we'll quickly just open up to Jeremiah as the Holy Spirit is leading us. Jeremiah 29. If you have your Bibles, I'm always with King James Version. If you are with me, child of God, where you're located from, however you are connected, you're welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end hallelujah to give you an expected end so there is an expected end of Jehovah of the maker of the seed <laughs> seed planter you are the seed bearer you are carrying the seed of God 
it. The planter of that seed. He knows the thoughts. He knows the plan. He knows the will that he has towards you. Glory to Jesus. Sorry, people of God. I know the plans that I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To bring us to an expected end. An expected end. An expected end of God. And if we check again in the book of Revelations, chapter, chapter 22. Thank you, Father. He is the rewarder of every one of us that diligently seek him. Verse 12. 22 verse 12. I didn't plan all of the scriptures. So the Holy Spirit is just taking us there. Taking somebody there. Taking you there. Taking us there. And in that place of, of confusion. In that place of uncertainty. In that place of doing many things at the same time. In that place of trying to please everyone else. In that place of trying to, to please your wife. Maybe trying to please your husband. Trying to please even your children. Hallelujah. God is speaking to you today. That his plans for you are thought of good and not of evil. His plan is to take you to an expected end. Hallelujah. And in Revelation 22 verse 12. As we begin to open to the next verse, which is, um, and behold, I come quickly. Verse 12 of Revelation 22. And my reward is with me. To give, we see again, to give. Jeremiah says, 29 verse 11, he says, to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. And in 22, um, 22nd chapter of Revelations, verse 11. It says, to give every man according to his work. So what is your work if it's not the plan of God? <laughs> Hallelujah. According to his work shall be. According as his work shall be. Sorry about that. To give every man according as glory to jesus i don't know what is so somebody something is appearing on my screen thank you father thank you holy spirit yes to give every man every man give every man according as his work shall be this 2013 says i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end. <laughs> the beginning and the end. The first and the last. So what expected end is God talking about in Jeremiah 29 verse 11? What expected end is he talking about? Is it the expected end of Revelation 22 verse 12 and 13? You see? The Bible says that it is little by little. The scriptures, they are attached. They are one following the other they are like story building as you build you add you add it are blocks there are bricks they are making up and it's confirming your request your quest your desire your hunger for that answer for that prayer point that you've been putting before god glory to jesus and the grace of god that has called you onto this broadcast today i believe and i know that after this broadcast you will never be the same again God has set you to in that area in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So verse 29, chapter 29 of 11 and verse 12. If we look again the next verse. Then shall ye call upon me and I and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Because of the expected end. Verse 12 says, ye shall call upon, upon me. Verse 13, 12. Then shall ye call upon me, call upon whom? The Lord. You will call upon the Lord. 
for that desire for that desire he has laid upon your heart for that uncertainty that you don't know what to do for that many things that are cross crisscrossing your 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 every day those things that you want to do to please somebody to please your wife to please your children to please even yourself but that is not what maybe God is saying. That's not what He wants you to do. That is not what He has called it onto you. That is not what His expected end for you is, maybe. So He's inviting you in verse 12 of Jeremiah 29 that call upon me, ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. It might seem like it is a plan that is working. It might seem like it is bearing the necessary fruits that is sorting out the things that you will desire that you will sort out for you. But God might be working on something that is global. That is something that is working for, for, for not just you, but for a community. Because everything that you have, if you cannot give it out, if you cannot, if you cannot, if everything that God has put in you, if you cannot serve a multitude, if you cannot serve a stranger, if you cannot be extended to those that you don't even know, then God is here to reveal himself in that area of your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that somebody receive in understanding in Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus. And ye shall seek me, verse 13, and ye shall seek me and find me when it's a search for me with all your heart. So it takes the seeking, it takes the searching, it takes the knocking, it takes hunger, <laughs> it takes the desire of God for you because God's desire is our desire. God's will is our will. Once we are out of his will, then there is an error. Glory to Jesus. Somebody, I pray for you that you are not out of error in the name of Jesus. You are not in error in the name of Jesus. God is calling you back under his will, back to his will. Our prayer is to stay within the will of God. His will is to do what? To prosper us to an expected end. His plan, his plan, his thoughts are of good and not of evil. So that we are not doing the extra one. We are not doing the one that doesn't stay, that is not aligned to the plan of God. That we are not putting all our efforts, that too much effort on something. You are putting all your eggs in that basket and oh my goodness. It just seems like the eggs are so buried, buried, the hashing to the perfect timing of your timeline, of your will, your effort. When you have not sought God's, God's desire, God's plan, God's perfect plan. Hallelujah. So he's saying in Jeremiah 29 verse 13, that you would seek me with all your hearts. You will find me. And when you find me, then you found that purpose. Then you found that plan. You found that expected end. Glory to Jesus. And as we earlier saw in verse 12 of, um, of um, Revelation 22, he is the rewarder. He will reward us. He will reward every man according to his works. And one thing I began to ask the Holy Spirit <laughs> when I, 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 I when He led me to this verse on one of the sermons that we did some month, I think six weeks ago, so last month, verse twelve, Jerem um, Revelation twenty-two twelve, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Behold, I come quickly and my reward 
my reward so it is not your reward it's not about you so we see that my reward the reward of god god rewarding you is unto his glory so the glory of god my reward is with me my reward i am alpha i am omega omega his reward the reward of your life the reward of that plan or the reward of that expected end is unto god is unto the glory of god so his reward at the end glory to jesus is not ours but because you are reward he's rewarded his name is glorified so at the end of it all it's all about the glory of god what are you doing in that life plan in that in that in that work in that job in that in your family your commitment to anything that you are so bent on doing right to even to the last of your drop of drop of the blood is it unto the glory of god is the reward of 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 god in it he says my reward is with me i will give to every man according to his work behold i come quickly my reward is with me hallelujah bless the name of the lord the main scripture as the holy spirit has finally giving us an intro as we call it i didn't prepare these scriptures that we have just opened up right now i believe that that is how the lord was going to bring you in and settle us to have an understanding and a brother brother and um, 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 revelation on what we are about to see now in the life of joseph joseph the, the example, Joseph, the, the plan of God, the perfect plan of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I believe that many of us, all of us, I would, I would believe we've come. Most of us have come from a background, a Christian background, where we were we were raised in Sunday schools, at least our way to God. We have read it. If we are from Africa, maybe Cameroonians, my fellow compatriots from Cameroon, we have maybe we fell in the eras where we, we, we had this um book we called it our way to god in every sunday school gathering in every household there was our way to god and the story of joseph never missed in those those books glory to jesus so this is an old story of many many everyone even the pagan who know the story of joseph that is how the plan of god was for that story to cross along every generation that ever walked and is ever going to be on the surface of this world of this earth glory to jesus that the life of joseph the dreamer the life of joseph is such an imparting life such a powerful storyline glory to jesus that actually yes did exist because the 12 tribes of israel has um, come from this lineage from one of them is joseph glory to god joseph was the favorite child of his father joseph was born into a household of many 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 siblings joseph was a favorite child of a favorite wife glory to jesus the wife of his father's of his father's heart the wife of of his father's youth 
the wife that that his father gave all that he could ever give the wife that god gave his father because we saw the in genesis um, i think chapter 35 or 34 where where the servant of of, of jacob had gone to the banks of the river um gone to 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 was sent by his master by jacob glory to jesus and um, was sent by by isaac yes isaac to go so seek a wife for his son glory to jesus i believe that is how it was and the mystery of of the prophecy that was given him the servant that went that when you shall go by the river bank you will find a maiden shall come around the one that will give you water fetch water for herself and still fetch water for the camels shall be is the wife and behold that is exactly what happened and rachel came to the river bank and she did exactly just that glory to jesus so this child was a planned child a child that was always in the plan of god joseph was never a coincident child even though we look further again into the next books into the next chapters we see how his mother's womb was sealed and i began to ask the holy spirit why the mother's womb was sealed is she not the favorite wife is she not the wife that was called by god is she not the wife that was in the perfect plan of jacob's desire and isaac's desire for her son hmm. and the spirit of god revealed to me the timing of just joseph joseph's position in his father's line of children number 11 glory to jesus son <laughs> the other wife the first wife leah had all the sons she could bear she bore all the, the wonderful sons but joseph's time had not come the plan of god for joseph's timing was not according to the desire of jacob's heart jacob would have loved for her to have the best the first child it would have been reuben's mother maybe joseph would have been reuben but that was not the will of god that was not the plan of god that's what the holy spirit began to tell me that was not the plan of god the plan of god was to put him at the end the tail end number 11 Kariba Zota how many of us have been the tail end how many of us have face a situation where you feel like there is no hope there is no way forward there is no way out <laughs> how many of us have been sidelined you've been put at the back seat whereas you desire that you want to be you are supposed to you want to be at the front seat you want to be at the front forefront that plan that you have been writing, your proposal you have been sending to that company, you have written, you have different godfathers you are searching just to get this proposal today, today, to the conglomerate. Let it get to that table, let them consider your, your offer. And it didn't work like that. So when you look at the life of Jacob, Joseph, sorry, thank you, Jesus. When you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph's mother is a favorite. Joseph's mother was the one after God's heart, the one that God chose, the prophetic wife. Yet she had the eleven child, the eleven son, and she bore just two of them. She bore only two, and the Bible says she died. Any other of the wives did not die; the mother died. So Joseph is growing up without even a mother so you see the lack you see the 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 the, the shortages the, how god kept making it seem like it was not going to be how can a boy child whose mother was a favorite wife whose father is is the favorite son he is the favorite son of his father <laughs> relakuba zanta how can it be possible that he went through all of this in life 
Glory to Jesus. And the Bible tells us that Joseph was made a favorite garment, a coat of many colors. I don't know if we begin to imagine what many colors is. Many colors that is decorated by his father, by his own father, his father, Rekabo Zuata, because he's the, the son of his old age. So all along, Joseph got, Jacob got married. He lived all his life with the favorite wife, not being able to bear the children at the right time. Her womb was sealed by God for God's plan. So maybe that thing that you're asking for, that thing that you're so desiring, that place that you're standing there, God is saying, wait here. Wait there, wait there, wait here until it is the time, until the hour is right. For you to be patient, for you to grow, for you to have the, 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 the maturity, the capacity to be able to carry that higher blessing that is forward, forwarded in the later years. Glory to Jesus. If only just Jacob knew, if Jacob ever knew about Rachel's situation, that that is why she had the, the later kids, children. Maybe if he was the first son, he would have been wayward. Like Reuben, he turned out to be the wayward ones. Simeon were the most, all of them, Judah, all of the elder brothers. <laughs> the Bible tells us that Joseph was the report card. He was the, 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 the town crier to his father. He will come and report all their bad reports, evil things that they were doing. He will be the one to call. He was the watchman of his father's household at the age of 17. At the tender ages, at, from the time he was ever, I believe from a boy, when he began to have reasoning, the Bible says that he will bring reports to his father about his brothers. If they are evil reports, he didn't record any good reports about his brothers, elder brothers. So why was he born the eleventh child? Why are you born the second child? Why are you born the third child? Why are you the first child? Kari Kabo Zata. We looked earlier in Jeremiah. It says that you will seek me, you will call upon me, and I will answer you. Twenty nine and verse twelve. Call upon me and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Ask God why? Why is it in this place? Why am I still in this village? Father, what is your plan for me? What is your perfect purpose for this wife that you've given me? Why am I still not married? Why am I between spouses? I'm not able to settle or I'm not able to choose one. Help me. Kariza Bukata. The same God that I chose Rachel, who sent his servant to go near the well and get Rachel by prophecy. That same God, put the word of God before him and ask him, if you are the same God that chose Rachel and selected Rachel for Jacob, give my wife, choose my own wife, and you see how the plan of God will come to pass because his word is his book. Glory to Jesus. So as we, we see further, now we understand why Joseph was the last, but not the least child in the household of Jacob. Sorry, people. Go at you. <laughs> you know, these people are very smart. These kids, eh? it's holiday, and a lot of <laughs> a lot of um, hormones are running over. <laughs> but we are we are up to the task. And the help of God. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe that many parents are, are as as me are, you know, we are going through some sort of this the space is now congested. You know, they are home with us. If we are not too busy, we are stuck with them. And you know how it is. It's one thing or the other, one desire, one need or the other. Sometimes they want to outsmart you, they want to trick. They want to play little, you know, <laughs> hide and seek sort of games. So I have 
not giving him something i said he has to do something before he gets it guess what since i'm concentrating on the live broadcast this boy has come to play my sense but we have to say that we are we have sense more than that. so that was by the way that was just um, on the side of um, relating you can relate so it's not only you that is going through this <laughs> this season all of us are in it and god will help us in jesus name glory to jesus thank you holy spirit so we see joseph being the favorite child of his father <laughs> did not make him favorite to his brothers joseph being the favorite child of his father did not mean that he had a perfect childhood or he had his mother wasn't there to raise him to help him to see him through maybe adolescence challenges of 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 growing up glory to jesus and we can see that every time he brings the favorite the, the, the evil reports of his brothers he was being challenged the brothers hated him the most the more they hated him the more he brought their evil reports <laughs> and why would god go and choose such a one why did god choose him to reveal the biggest dream ever told in the time of <laughs> of epic in the time of of the patriots why would god choose such a one that was hated household enemies struggling with different sort of challenges you've probably sent your your, your cv to all the possible companies you know every godfather you think you have has promised you and you keep calling sometimes they don't even pick your call again and you are feeling like ah that is the end of the road there's no way out little do you know that joseph joseph himself went through that so this is your story this is your story joseph was without mother joseph was hated joseph struggled to to get his brother's attention yet they hated him the more the Bible says they never spoke peaceably with him. So he had no peace with his brothers. Because light that he is, he was righteousness. He was upright in his ways. The brothers were not. So as a child of God, expect it. Expect, expect the contrary attacks. Expect persecution. Expect arrows being thrown at you. Glory to Jesus. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the setbacks of the righteous. Many are the temptations of the righteous. As you continue to press in with the word of God, the promises of God, staying in his presence, you will definitely get the answers. God will always deliver you. The Bible says he will deliver you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. May the Lord deliver them from them all. So we can see in the life of Joseph, the favorite son of his father, when he had his first dream, we unlock his first dream right now. He dreamed that amidst his brothers, they went to 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 the to the to the farm, or was it to to the to the barn to the sh Hallelujah. Yeah, he said, and he said unto them, Here, <laughs> see how he says, Here, yeah. uh, here, you push you here. <laughs> here, I pray you. He says, Give me your attention. See how how bold he was. See the power of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God that is in you. You are going to be fearless. You are going to be, you are you, you have confidence. Because you are upright. You are walking in the light of God. This is the nature of the people that serve God. This is how Joseph is. He calls on his brothers. Fearless without this dream. This dream that looks so, so ridiculously intimidating. <laughs> Speaking everything against him. Everything for him. Everything against his brothers. Where would this boldness have come from? Where would this such fire have come from? Where would such... such <laughs> Redaba Zuta, meaning that he somewhere in his guts he knew that he had the backup of heaven he knew that God is with him 
Hallelujah. When you know that God is on your side, you are fearless. You will speak the truth and nothing but the truth. And that truth shall set you free. Kariba zato kayambati eliakato. Joseph calls on his 11 or his 10 dubious, crazy brothers. And he's bold enough to tell them, hear me. I can just imagine. <laughs> Here, you turn around and listen to me. <laughs> this dream which I have dreamt, come and hear it. Hmm. Hallelujah. So your household enemies are necessary. Hmm. Those household enemies, those people that are praying evil for you, that are digging pits for you. God, don't pray for God to remove them. Pray for God to continue to cover you. Pray to be in the presence of God. Because those people, they are the ones that will lead you to the plan, perfect plan of God. Karabu zitikana. His brothers are as good as household enemies. As he begins to unveil his dream. For behold, verse 7, Genesis 37, verse 7. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheep arose. And also stood upright. Don't forget, we have already mentioned him as upright man. Upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. <laughs> I don't know if we understand. You are telling your elder brothers. You are telling people that you can see that they don't even like you. You are standing before them. You are preaching the word of God. You know that they despise you because <laughs> you are always coming about their feeble and their, their, their nonchalance and their funny behaviors. You are always kicking against them. You are always rebuking them. These are the people. Kaliba Rato Zanta. These are the people that Joseph is facing. Joseph stands before his brothers and is rebuking. He can rebuke them for their evil ways and he will run to even tell his father. If they don't listen to him, he will add, add more salt to injury. He will go and tell their father. These are people who are older than him, like 10 years, 15 years, as old as old enough to even be his father. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Joseph is only 17 at this point when he had this dream. The dream is showing that they are bowing to him. Their sheaves are paying obeisance. Obeisance is, is, is bowing. Bowing. Hallelujah. Can you stand before anything, anybody, and begin to, to unveil such harmless truth the moment you begin to say such things <laughs> your enemies double the moment you begin to aspire you want to have big dreams like you are you are you want to to try to be anything your father or even your own mother let's just start from your siblings they'll be the first people to do to be shushotei at the back. What does he think he is? What does he think he wants to become? Is he wanting to be shiny more than everybody? At that place of work, if you have released, giving the best, best um, target, you're finishing your target on time and even asking for more. Does he think that he is one, he just newly employed, employed here? Does he want to come and overshadow us? That is what happens behind your back. And the Bible is telling us, according to this scripture, that those people are necessary. Many of us who shall who want to be good, who want to be on the good side, who want to make everybody your friend, you want to, everybody should agree with that dream, they should like you. Many will be laughing in your face. 
despise you and give you back. That is what exactly was happening to Joseph. Because he was an upright man, because he walked in righteousness, because he was the favorite. He had to only be the favorite because he was walking in the right side. Glory to Jesus. He was within the plan and the will of God for him. Hallelujah. So as we look into the next verse, verse 8 says, And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams. So this is the recorded dream for us to see. For his dreams, meaning Joseph is uh, he's a dreamer. He has a, he is always, God is always showing him. The upright person is the one that God will come and speak to, who will reveal them to. The one that calls upon the name of the Lord. The one who seeks God. The one who walks in righteousness. The one who walks in the, according to the promises of God. God will speak to them. God will reveal himself. God will reveal your future. Reveal his, his plans for you. That is what he's saying. This one still will hate you. But heaven is your backing. Hallelujah. I don't know if Joseph had this assurance. If he had this, this, this knowing. Because the Bible is telling us that he spoke them all. He kept bringing his dreams to them. The more his dreams, they hated him the more for his dreams. Meaning that each dream he had, <laughs> meaning that each, each vision he had was threatening to the enemy, was always a threat. And those threats were bringing him closer to the next dream, closer to the next phase, closer to the next stage, closer to the next ladder, closer, closer to the next step. Hallelujah. The Lord kept opening. The more the enemies, the more the challenges, the more you go closer, the more you seek him, the more you ask him. Rabota Kandia Lokaza for his plan for you. Kaliba Aruata. Child of God, be sure that you will get there. The expected end must surely come to you in your life in Jesus' name. Because the one that is not dreaming is not alive. You can see with these brothers. The ones that were not dreaming, <laughs> they will only be filled with hate and self-effort, self-struggle, self. They did all sort of things. At least if they couldn't dream, let him stop his dream. That is what they try to do. At least if they cannot bring you down, let them stop you from dreaming. Let them stop you from being even on this earth, to even be alive. That's what they plan next. And the Bible says his father, when Joseph dreamed the second, the mightiest dream that included the whole household, his father, his mother, everybody, bowing to him. The stars were bowing. The moon and the sun bowed. Even Jacob himself said, Ah, no, 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 this one is not, it's not all right. Are you now saying that even I, your father, will come and bow to you? Are you saying that me and my household, all of this all put together, would succumb, would pay obeisance to you, a child at a birth? But the ways of God are not the ways of man. That is where the plan of God for every life, for every person that he has placed upon this earth, they have nothing to do with the father's line or the mother's line or whatever. What God has said about you, you only have to seek it. You only have to go look for it. And if no better than a dream, I don't know where God can actually show again. There are many things that God will show you in your dream and you will see those things happen every day. If not today, it will happen. It will come to be. As you continue to press it, like Joseph did. The Bible says his father, his brothers hated him. On this last dream, it was just the, 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 the camel's back. They couldn't stand it. 
Reya Kabazo. And I began to ask the Holy Spirit, I said, but let us read that dream. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his it his brother and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. <laughs> see that. See, can you can you just try to understand how Joseph was was bold, how how he was harmlessly vulnerable, how he was he was without fear. That's how God wants us to be. We should depend on him because the one that has shown you the dream did not say you should. He did not give you instruction not to go and say it. Actually, that is the footstool of that dream to manifest. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you say it and those that doubt it, those that are working against it, God wants them to come forth. He needs the opposition to manifest to push, to challenge that dream. He needs you to, 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 to break forth, to stand out from that dream and walk onto the, into the dream, to walk on it. That is why you speak it. That is why you, you alter it to whomsoever is around you that the Lord has made available, whether they like it or not. That thing that he has set upon your life, your heart, your mind, that you are restlessly, sometimes you even tossing around your bed, you are, you are, you are, you have been trying, it keeps failing. You try, it keeps falling. And the Lord keeps saying that, he keeps showing you that this is how it will look like. This is how the skyscraper is going to be as tall, even taller than the one of Babel. <laughs> and you are asking, when you keep saying it, they are wondering, say, what is this dreamer dreaming? What are you talking but God has shown you. It is not on to man to decide when, and even not you. Hallelujah. What is he saying? That you should keep trusting in God. You should keep putting your faith in he who has the authority of faith. That is why you are here. And if you look at Joseph's life, this dream, the second dream, <laughs> and told it his brother and said, Behold, I have dreamt a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. The first time was Shif lying, bowing to him, to his own Shif. His own Shif was standing upright to reveal to us that he was a man of righteousness he was he was he was in 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 right standing with god upright hallelujah <laughs> the sun and moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me and he told it to his father and to his brethren and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream, dream that you have dreamt? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed bow down to you? Ourselves? To the end? <laughs> this must be amazing. When you, 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 you imagine that, how, how could this ever be? The courage alone to stand before his parents, before his stepmoms, because by then his mom wasn't there anymore. The courage to stand before those brothers and begin to, 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 to spit out such, such <laughs> in their own mind abomination, such, such a dream that indeed I, your father, Israel, you know, don't forget his name is no longer Jacob, it's now Israel. The God has promised him that because of him, the children of Israel will be multiplied. Then he is the seed of Abraham, um, Abraham. God has blessed him and gave him a new name, Israel. And this is the son of Israel telling him that he, Israel, will be bowing to him. He didn't know what it means, the mystery of God behind that dream. 
and the bible says at the end of that it says and his brethren envied him verse 11 but his father observed the father had understanding the brother the father observed the same the father did not go as fast he would have been emotional and try to understand that he himself knows the encounters he has had with god he was a man of god so he had that's glory to jesus he could only sit back and watch what god was going to do hallelujah so god will place people like that around you to guard your dream to to there will just be one stranger or somebody in your family there's always one person speaking in your behalf just there's always this extra force that is backing you up somehow because god placed it there many times it happens this way he's only telling you that i am with you the bible says the father observed this dream and if you watch you will see the brothers will go to tend to the flocks to go to the farm to travel abroad to do many different things but he was never amongst them the father did not let him in their midst hallelujah because the father had a, had wisdom the father knew that the brothers did not like him all right i already said it excuse me thank you you really have to tell me okay you guys take three days one day friend yeah sorry about that people that say thank you jesus thank you father <laughs> hallelujah we see the father protected him the father observed the dream the father observed the father is a man of god the father understands the mysteries of god the father understands what encounters are the father understands visions hallelujah the father knew that this dream is an uncommon dream this dream that is child dream this 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 anointing of of interpreter that he is is only of god the father observed the father kept watch the father protected him the father kept him away from his, the, the the lights of his brothers hallelujah because we see in the next chapter how the father had sent him the same chapter glory to jesus sent him to check him to go help his brothers to go check on them why would somebody who is hated by his brothers and he knows that they don't like him why would god make such an, an opportunity why would god create even though though the father had been protecting had been preserving observing knowing the dislike and the despise of his brothers yet this a loophole was created god made made that way that look like it will look like 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 an ordinary thing maybe you you will just have the desire to travel to a, a certain city that you've never been there that is how this breakthroughs begin to start you have that push that restless desire to go somewhere to meet someone to call this person hallelujah Bible says the Bible says in verse 13 and Israel said unto Joseph do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem come and I will send thee unto them and he sent him there he sent him he sent his his only who will say his favorite son the one that bore the coat of many colors the child of his old age his only favorite the best thing that happened to him because all his other sons were wayward 
They were a thorn to his flesh. There was no time that they had good reports. These boys, even, even as much as killed people, somebody, they were going to exile them from Canaan. But because of the will of God, God kept them because of the dream of Joseph, because of the plan of God. Jacob was a very humble man, was a man of peace. He would make peace even with the enemy. He would do everything to be at peace with all men. That was, a, that was just the spirit of God in him because he understood where God was, what God was doing. That is why he would preserve his son. He observed the son's dreams. Kandaruba Zata. When it was time, when the hour had come, it doesn't look like it. It will look like it is the den of lions. Kimbarakua Zata. The Bible says the father put him together in this coat of many colors and in his happy, happy adolescent age, in his teenage, he's so full of life with many dreams as God had been showing him. Oh, I'm sure he thought that those dreams were just as close as, as he, he saw them, as, as they were coming back to back, back after one another. God will be showing you this one today. He will, you will see yourself fly to, 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 I will be there to call one city, uh, Honolulu. Tomorrow you are, you see yourself, you are ministering in, in, in Canada. Another dream you find yourself, you are tender, you are helping young children. Another dream you are married, you are getting, you, many things that God is showing you and they are just coming back and forth. And none of them is happening. And you begin to wonder, are these dreams? Are this just mere imagination? Is it me and my, my, my subconsciousness? It is God indeed. When you have these dreams, you go before God. You ask him. Jeremiah 29 verse 12, he says, Call ye unto me and I will answer you. Pray and I will answer you. I will reveal to you. I will happen unto you. It might not look like it so far. They might be laughing at you. They will mock at you. They would, they would ridicule you. But remember, Joseph's father had to send him to the fields. Amidst all of these dreams, he saw his own father bow to him. He saw his own mother bow to him. He saw his 11 brothers bow to him. This is not happening. And he stood there. The father is sending him to go and meet those who hated him the most. His brothers. <laughs> he saw his Because he's so vulnerable. Vulnerably harmless. That's how the righteousness of God is. Your God's righteousness is, is pure. You have a heart of you don't have any anything against nobody. You are the, the white horse. You are like the dove. The Holy Spirit is in you. When others will be calling, show off, um, all of this thing, propaganda, you know, some will even say you are, you are fake, you are this and that, they will be calling you names. That is because they don't have what you have. Because they don't know what you know. They don't see what you see. They have not been revealed what God has revealed to you. So stay there. The opposition is for you to go further, for God to get you to that expected end. This is Joseph being sent from this day on. If his father knew he was not going to see him again, I believe this dream will not come to be. Remember, he's the only one that was dreaming. The father did not come one day and say he dreamt. God did not show him nothing about his favorite son. Why did God not show him anything? Because Jacob, with so much love for his son, would have stopped it. This wouldn't have come to pass. <laughs> Hallelujah. The brothers kept so much offense 
so much hate, so much bitterness, so much competition, so much wickedness, so much backbiting, gossip, all kind of canal, you know, impurities in their hearts. How can God speak to such people? How will God even show you anything? If Joseph as much as had such a heart, believe me, there will be no Joseph dream, the dreamer today you and I is talking about. Kili Karaba Sota. But everything they threw at him, he took it with. He said it is well. It did not stop him from rebuking them. It did not stop him from doing the will of God. It did not stop him from doing the plan of God. It did not stop him from preaching the gospel. It did not stop him from dreaming. <laughs> The more they did, the more the God of his life, the God that caught him, the God that kept him upon the surface of the earth, the God that gave him life, the God that preserved his life showed him even more. Why? And God blinded his father's eyes. The father could not see, no dream. Because the love of his son was too much. Imagine his own hands, he made a coat of many colors. That man will not allow that son to go anywhere. Hallelujah. So sometimes you are in that comfort zone, that comfort zone, that plenty, plenty love, too much, relax. And it's time to get uncomfortable. Rabo <laughs> Kaza, somebody write it somewhere. It is time to get uncomfortable. It's time to, to, to get into the ground. It's time to go into the pits. The Bible is calling you. The word of God, the promise, the plan of God is taking you to that village. Because if it shows you the pathway to that perfect plan if it shows you how rough it is if you see it you will never appreciate him his glory was come to be because he would walk you through the valley of the shadow of death you have to see his power you have to see his presence you have to see faith manifest because without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible. That's why many, many fall short. Many give up. Many surrender. Many, we just get comfortable. Go back to the comfort zone. Go back to the world. Go back to darkness. Go back to vomit. That we have vomited and God has already moved you from somewhere. You want to go back there. Whereas he is making you uncomfortable. He's kept you by yourself. He has removed you from the company of those people that are blocking his visions from getting to you. That best friend that is stabbing you, that one that is bringing you all the latest gossip of all celebrities that are nothing in line with your life, with the life of Christ that you have right now. That is where you want to. You are yoking yourself with the places where God has already taken you off. How will God show you the great expectations of your life? How are you going to manifest his power, his grace, his love, his purpose? How are you going to live it? You have to outlive yourself. <laughs> In other words, Galatians 2.20, you have to die. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, verse 13, he was sent by his father to go and attend to his brother's needs. They are in another nearby city. Remember, there are no cars, there are no vehicles, there are no nothing. So he's walking, he trek all the way there. Sometimes it's the last, the last figure you have in your account. God is saying that give it away. Lela karua bazante ki bakuta ikatarava. God is saying, lay it on your heart. 
Play this child's high school. The child has passed GC. He is playing on your heart. Help this mother. She's a widow. Help one give that money you have to her. Let her send this child to the school that he, God, has promised for that child. And you sit there and hold on to your money. You don't know that that is your catapult. That is your seed to catapult you into the next glory. Your understanding by yourself that how can these things be? Luke chapter 1, verse 36, 35. Mary is asking, How shall these things be? How is this possible? Seeing that I've never known a man. And then Gabriel said to her, With God, nothing shall be impossible. Write it somewhere. God is challenging you, somebody. That if you like, for some people are here, they say they challenge God. That thing that he has laid upon your heart, that thing that you feel that you cannot do, that thing you cannot give up on, that addiction, he's daring you that take all that alcohol right now and pour it in one bucket and flush it in the toilet. No matter how much it costs you. Some of us, you, we used to buy different brands of them. Duty free. I used to travel a lot the borders of 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 um, um uh, what do they call it? Um, um, uh, um, Germany and UK back then. Duty free. Larabakazo. <laughs> if you see this woman, me and Bellis, you know what is Bellis? Bellis is this drink like that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Allow me to say this. Hallelujah. If I don't drink Bellis, what, what, what do I gain? I'm dead. If I don't drink Bellis, I'm finished. Uh, this woman, me and Bellis, and anything that has to do with coconut flavor, all of this, the other one, they call it what? I've been forgotten their names. Can you believe it? I have forgotten the names. To be very honest, I cannot remember the name of that drink. The drinks that I will give my last dime are duty free. Or even at shops. I don't care how much it costs. I will buy it. And fill my bar with it. With them. I had a bar. <laughs> yes. One fine day when the Lord had saved my wretched, useless, dirty, unclean that's all he said to me carry all of these things we're in England now I even transported all my my drinks from my bar we even bought more from the from the duty free I have the video here hallelujah <laughs> we bought more from duty free so if you're watching from a uh, oh bless you thanks for joining me you're welcome in the name of jesus i've not been on the stream life your name is stream life just bear with me if you're watching from stream yard hallelujah this video has been there for ages so the day for it to be shown has come i tell you the plan of god is not your eyes it's not for you to know because once you know it will not ever be it will never come to pass Hallelujah. Just give me a moment. Let me put on that, that video. The Lord made me to record this video. This is two years ago. <laughs> For it to come up today is, is amazing. It's just amazing. I hope it's here. If it's not here, then I believe. But already, I already, I, I, uh, this is the one. I don't think it is. I put it on here. Hallelujah. There were several of them. I think I, I took them out or something. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Just breathe your name upon me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
are your word. Is this the one? I don't think so. Just bear with me a moment, people of God. It won't be a minute and we'll get up back today. Hallelujah. Oh, the presence of God is so full here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to get that video that the Lord is leading me to. Mon fils, voyez, je veux donner un conseil. Voilà, c'est bien. Um, out, out. Sort that later. I had it on there, but I thought somehow the the space sometimes doesn't um, take all videos, so I had to to delete them. So to add a new video, you need to make space for others. Yeah. So it's been there for long until today. The Lord wants me to put it up, and somehow, oh Father, forgive me. I deleted it because of space, but I still have it. I have the video. I would likely God will make another time for that. Hallelujah. So there are things that God wants you to read of. There are things that. Oh, we so strongly <laughs> that thing that hits your soul, hits your mind, hits your spirit all at the same time, and your body will be telling you, This is just some casual thinking. This is you. No, that is God. God is, is, is snatching you out of darkness onto Himself to set you on that that note of glory because he doesn't want you to leave this place without fulfilling that which he has promised about your life and as we see in the life of joseph his father is saying come and go and meet your brothers <laughs> it did not look like it come are your brothers not in shaken go and meet them Probably take water to them, take food to them, you know that kind of thing. Naturally, maybe he's going to be like, ah, these brothers who don't even like me, father. Why are you sending me? You see, um, I don't want to go. Then he's an obedient child. The Bible says he is upright. He was a evil report bringer. So he was just even maybe looking for another opportunity to go and spy and see the nonsense they're doing. As usual, the brothers are always up to no good hallelujah so he has showed up going happy in his coat of many colors a favorite child having the best time of his life his father's house oh rada Cabo zante comfort zone perfect everything is working out fine really good for him hallelujah and this is about to change everything is about to to, to transpose <laughs> onto the next place, Kariba Katazo Daya. Onto the next. Somebody say, Onto the next. I have to get onto the next. Onto the next. It is time to get onto the next. Hallelujah. It is time to leave that place. It is, it is not by your own understanding. Don't try to understand it. Because the moment you start bringing self and understanding into it, then you have taken the place of God. You have said God is incapable. God cannot do it. God is, is, is just in this, my scriptures. I read it only at night when I want to call on him to cover me blood of Jesus. That blood of Jesus is the one calling you to move from that place. And the Bible says, this boy left his father's house, was going to meet his brothers. Before he even got there, somebody met him on the way. See how the plan of God is working. We've already not understood that if the father knew he was going to go and not come back, <laughs> there will be no idea of go and check on your brothers, go and take water to them, go and look if they are doing very well, because that is what he said. How are your brothers faring? Go and check on them. And unto him, obedient child, 
he humbly put himself together like the lamb that he is and began to go so sometimes most of the times you are a sacrifice unto many unto a legacy that would have been impossible if you if you if you only if you could speak and see that you are actually a sacrifice you are a lamb for your children for your entire family from the grand aunties to the uncles from those altars that have been fighting and god has raised you as the 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 the, 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 the intercessor if you know that this is what god was planning Today's stories will not change. Things will never change. If they are still waiting for a Messiah in your family when God has already called you. But because you want to stay in the comfort zone, you want to stay there and be going to your 95 and to be doing your own that you like to do. Hallelujah. You put your car, children in the car and drive them. When God has said, be uncomfortable for the next two years, have no car. Jump on the bus so that your children will learn how to how to how to master the ropes of life so your children will know humility jump on public transport save some money for this time Do whatever there's so many things that god is saying that you want to be so everything has to be supplied everything is there i'm not saying that it is wrong i'm just saying the things that God will take out that God will make possible for you to be without those things, to be in lack. Paul will say in the book of um, um, Second Corinthians, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That I walk in bounds and as I walk in plenty, in 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 humility. In plenty, I can survive as much as in, in lack. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Karabua Kandelia Bazatu. Villa Ileki B. Karabazu Tekim Bayata. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 11. Yes. Just first of second. Hallelujah. Paul says in bounds or in lack when I'm limited I still live above I don't live above my limits when I have more I still live I still give glory to God so no matter the situation no matter the change of climate whether things have gone all the inflation of prices so I depend on who on God whether it's be less so I am not complaining hallelujah sometimes God will want us to be to work in humility in that in that discomfort just to teach us that days ahead are not very very smooth the time will come when you will need this strength you will need the strength that you're learning now you will need to master these ropes so that when that that grace of that time shows up you would have matured hallelujah that's why most of us who have challenges with our children we have we have so much live in such a, a a liberty a way with them that you walk in somebody's house the child cannot even as much as say hello to you we greet you auntie good afternoon auntie good morning they are on their tablets they are on their gadgets they are on their whatever they are so used to 
because that is their comfort zone their parents have made it that is their 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 their, their solace that is their only place of 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 <laughs> hallelujah that is it has it's, it's their life is their idol so god is teaching us he's showing us that take these things from these children bringing them the ways of the right bringing upbringing so that tomorrow when things get tough they can remember to call auntie when something goes wrong they will have somebody they are familiar with somebody you have taught something you have taught them hallelujah in this generation in this diaspora where we are it will only take the grace of god it will take the wisdom of god to even harvest as much as a, a, a child that can can speak one proper hallelujah speak appropriately to an elder or even to among themselves most of the times we have made them so carefree so so you know because we got so comfortable I don't know about back home but abroad we got so comfortable that our children they don't know nothing they don't know nothing about nothing <laughs> well in my own books i find it I find it a, a, a very powerful tool to talk about your struggles as a child, about your childhood, about your, your, your challenges as a child, even about the challenges of others, even if you are not very, you are not from a humble background. Well, growing up in back in the days is humbling. It's a humbling background in our times. If somebody did not tell us their own story, if we did not live to see our grandparents, most of them have, they are abroad, they don't know their grandparents, they don't know about grandma, they don't know grand auntie, they don't know auntie, they don't know family. They don't know it out here. Well, I'm precising on diaspora. So it is only, it is only treasury. It's a treasure for you to, to expose them into everything about your own life, about if you don't have pictures, graphics to show them. I mean, we cannot say we are too busy, too busy to 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 to, to open up those those wounds. Even how you got your first cars, how you fell on the on the slide from the the, the, the not even water slide. Is it more slide that you slide from? You know how you go and harvest mangoes and and, and pluck guavas how you created um, um, dolls those things how you wore a, a uniform of, of that was torn it was torn uniform around the waistline sometimes you patch it sometimes you even go to school with slippers if you have them some don't even have those are things that you sit with them on bible verses and just open them up into that realm that life can be like that it is okay and very very okay to be humble humbly to walk in the humble in to walk in humility to expect the low points in life i god forbid that anyone grows up right into their adulthood without experiencing difficult times lack times of that you look at your parents and you see you see there's pain on their face there is something that is not right and you ask god forbid that any child will grow up in this era and not have to see a moment of of fear in the parents eyes of worry what tomorrow will be what will we eat what will be you know how would they pay a certain bill which includes their bills 
the phones, the gadgets you carry in the name of the recent, the latest gadgets you put in their hands, what you cannot even pay at some point. There has been redundancy in, in companies, you have been sacked, or there is cut down of salaries and you're struggling. Yet you take the latest iPhone for that child and that child doesn't see you lament of how to pay that bill. It is not, it is not right. That child, we need, to, we need to tell our children that this needs that you have, they are not necessary. There are times that you, 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 you don't have what you want. You have what you need. If our children grow without understanding that there are times where want is different from need, then we have, we have not done well. If all they know is comfort, all they know is, you know, la la la. Hmm. And everything is like Cinderella story. Hallelujah. Maybe it's a fairy tale life like that. Reka <laughs> Bazonta. The Lord is telling us somebody, I don't know how we are we are digressing like this, but I believe the Lord is speaking to some of us. We're in very, very perilous times that. There are things we can't even begin to understand. Let us let alone explain to the next person. Hallelujah. So Joseph. <laughs> Joseph has been sent to the field to meet his brothers. To meet his brothers his evil brothers that he knows they never the bible says he they never speak to him peaceably so there is no peace between him and his brothers why will he have courage to go meet them in that kind of that kind of wilderness that distance what gave him the courage what gave him the drive it takes the power and the spirit of god to get to where the lord is leading you to because on your own, if you saw it, you will not go. <laughs> you will not try it. If the Lord showed the father of Jacob, um, of Joseph, that this one you are sending him today, you will never see him again. Just Jacob will not allow that. It cannot happen now. Why? My son, whom I took my own hands and made a coat for him, I can say that that's the only thing he ever made. As much as he put the colors, the rainbow colors, one by one, all of them fitted into that coat. As a child, you will say, Jacob should allow to go and not come back. Nah. You see that comfort zone? You see that they are very, very wonderful friends? You see those ones that you've traveled with them from A to B, from Lala to Lolo? Those ones that at any time you have called them, they don't even call you. They have already sent you everything you desire, you need. You are never in need. God wants you to be in need. God wants you sometimes to, 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 to go trusting him. Test the faith of God, faithfulness of God. That is the only way to walk in that expected end, the direction of that promise. Hallelujah. So the Bible is saying that Jack, Joseph moved, went to meet his brothers, and before he got there, someone else stopped him on the way. A stranger recognized him. He was wandering there, wandering. So there are times where you are confused. You don't know whether it is a left side or right road to take, whether who you will marry. Many things are facing you at the same time. And even somebody will come and try to stop you. That is way that you want to go. This thing you're saying, 
that you want to relocate to that village you want to go and be start a pipeline there the lord is he said the lord has put it on my heart to to start pipeline that there is no water in my father's compound in my father's hometown god has blessed me enough that I, god is saying i should go the, your friend is saying people are doing business now in boya they are opening companies in in Dwala. go and set up yeah you are saying that god this is what god has shown me sometimes we will now derail for our own selfish interest whereas the ball holes are there god has already put everything on plan there's every supply that you need you see that you go to that dweller there or to that boya and go and set up a skyscraper of hotels for more sins for all more confrontation all kind of things that all kind of atrocities that happen in such businesses we're not discouraging it that's not what i'm saying i know that somebody has understanding it's just to tell you that it is better to have life of water than a life of comfort for somebody to carry um, um, daughters of Jezebel to destroy homes and there are many things that happen in these places so maybe the ones that are there they are already causing enough trouble they don't need you to come and add more that's what I'm trying to say that is what the spirit of God may be saying to somebody hallelujah that don't be an addition to the problem of the society hallelujah Just by example, this is our boy that we are talking about. It's only one street like this. <laughs> it's only one hill. One small hill. But you come, the hotels are there. They cannot finish counting them. They are still building more. Building, adding over, over. So the day there's a landslide, if God has wants you, don't go and add your own there. You don't know. The day the, 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 the lava will come out again of the, of, from the mountain. Who knows? You might just stand somewhere and say, ah, Lord, this is what you meant. This is why I, I, I had, thank God I obeyed you a voice. Thank you, Father. And did what you asked me to do instead. I went ahead and I missed all the odds that my father will be desiring, my mother would want me to do, my siblings, everybody wants to stand on the stage with me and take the glory and be, you know, shiny. For the things that I have put around our family name. Whereas the Lord has blessed you enough to bless the whole community with a well of water. That's what Jacob was doing. He went around, dig around digging wells. Hallelujah. Each time he dug a well, he gave a name. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. Each time he opened, that is a new, he kept building altars by opening wells. Why would God not bless his household with a son like this? And the Bible says that he went on, he met his brothers, they read Santa. <laughs> hey, when the stranger stopped him on the way, Joseph did not turn back. Distractions. Your wife is talking to you. Your wife has a body. Something is bothering her on the mind. Hallelujah. Your children need their attention. You are there. Champions League. Champions League. That child is plunging into depression. Going into different, a different, going to seek counsel from other people. The time that you can come home and sit at home like a father or like a parent, that child is seeking for your attention. You are on the from one news to another, after news finish, you are tired, you go and sleep. The next morning, you, you are the same one who drives them to school to meet the point of fire that is threatening their life. Then you cannot talk to them. They don't have, you don't have access to them. You don't have communication. You don't have relationship with your children. Distractions. So this man was standing there. Why Joseph was wandering in Shechem there. He got there. He saw his brothers had moved from there. Are you seeing the power of God? His brothers had moved from Shechem. They have moved. I think to Doham, Doham, then this Doham, they said. Glory to Jesus. Oh, I feel like I'm not even supposed to, to look at it again. Thank you, Father.
Bible says he got there wondering, trying to figure out whether it's the upside, whether it's the downside, because it's a place he has not been to. Obviously, it's a new place that they, you know, people that have flock, they always look for where the grass is always fresh and green. So they moved. Hallelujah. Again, probably they always come to Shechem, and now Shechem has lost of um, um, green or the greenest grasses. They already fed there, and they moved to Doha, Valeria Cabo Zata. And while in Shechem, where the destination where the father sent him to, go and meet your brothers in Shechem. When he got to Shechem, the where the father sent him to is not what God wanted him to. Hey, where your family is expecting you to reach. That is the limitation. God is sending you to another place. Where you think is your ending point. God is saying that he is further. He's taking you further. So in Shechem was not a destination. Shechem was not a place where he had to start the dream to come to life. Rekabo Zata. It was not in Shechem that he was supposed to go. The stranger was there, probably would tell him, you are here, you know, what are you doing here? This place is not for a 17-year-old like you. What are you doing here? And so and so. This place is not for people like you. What are you doing in this company? I did not, I did not, they did not call you here. What are you coming here to do? Who gave you? Who is a godfather? They want to know what you are doing. To God be the glory. God bless you, man. Hallelujah. God bless you, Mama Sashanta. I'm just seeing your com comment now. Glory to Jesus. Reda Kaboze. Elia Kobaranda Zata. Hallelujah. Oh, it is all to the glory of God. Reka Bazende Akalabo. That is my sister from, 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 from childhood, I would say. One of my favorite people on the planet Earth. I've not seen her in more than 20 years. Chantal um, Chinedu. <laughs> um, no news, I call her fondly. Oh, I miss you, my love. God bless you, man. Thanks for joining me. Hallelujah. These are things she has been saying over the years. She has been speaking all of this stuff. Whatever she's come. And she's commenting it there. Glory to Jesus. Myself, I did not see that i'll sit here one day that is how god works his things unless you come into that realm of his purpose you will never know you are only you are vapor <laughs> read about zota first peter 4 14 it says you are you are grass you are human you are going to you are you 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 you, you die <laughs> it's the spirit of god in you that quickens that brings you Unless that happens, that dream will never be shown to you. I don't care if you are the biggest, the biggest, hallelujah, G O or M M M M M M. How do they call it? I don't know. I don't care if you are the, the highest manager of the biggest company. If you are Dangote's first daughter. Do you know that Jacob and Joseph, the path of Jacob and the path of Joseph were two different dimensions, two different parallel. While Jacob having encountered life encounters with God, he wrestled with God. Joseph did not have to wrestle with God. His father already did all the wrestling. Hallelujah. The father dug all the wells. Hallelujah. And when it was time for his son to take the mantle of the next, to bring this, the, 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 the history of the Israelites, of you and I today, because as far as I know, they live in Jerusalem. That's where I am, on Mount Zion. That is where you are. The heavenly Jerusalem, that is where we are. Hallelujah. 
Barende Akazo. This boy meets a stranger. I was so baffled. I began to ask the Holy Spirit, How come the stranger did not warn him even to tell him, Go back home? The brothers have gone far away. They have gone right to Doham. You cannot see them. Do you know what God has said? What God has promised for you? No man, no demon, no principality, no ayakatala kazu atarama kandeli kazuta. Chekeni akarabo zata. Lekabo. See, see. Nothing. Nothing, not even your belief or your own belief can stop it. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be altered. It cannot be, 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 be tampered with. So hold on to the promises of God. Hold on to the word of God. Galire Aboza. She he went. He did not. They have gone to Doha. So as to Dosa, glory to Jesus. Verse 17 of um, um, Matthew and um, um, Genesis 7, 27, 37. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dosa. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dotha. Such an obedient child, he doesn't want to go home without a report. He doesn't want to go home without meeting up with the targets. The father said, go and check if your brothers are faring. Lekabo. Dezanda karikele ya koto zuba chata. Ele kibizizi. Ritakambu zua tahari ya kole bechenda kaba. I don't know about you. You might feel like you don't even know what is to do. But I tell you, the seed of God that is in you, that seed will surely germinate after this sermon, after this podcast. That seed is germinating right now in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace and the spirit of God. Receive the anointing to be revealed the next step. If you have tarried more than enough and you don't know, you don't even hear God anymore. You can't even figure out what, what dimension to turn to. Hallelujah. May the Spirit of God lead you, show you. Hallelujah. I can tell you that at Shechem, he was supposed to go back home. But the day of the dream has started. Dream has started unfolding dream of 11 stars moon and sun 11 sheep bowing to his own sheep upright look at how he started this son moved from Shechem to Doha Doha because he is an upright man. He is an obedient child. He, is, he cannot go home without a report, without seeing his brothers. He has to check if they are actually fairy because that is the word of his father. Go and check if they are fairy. And the, 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 the stranger did not make him to abort the word of his father. So what was he going to go back to tell his father? I went to those to check him. They said they were not there. So I have come back. No, he's a fighter. He's a dreamer. He's a pursuer. He knows that he trusts God that he orders his steps. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 105, your words are the light to my path. He trusts the God that brought him out. The God that allowed him to go as way far as Shechem would surely take him to Doha. I don't know where you are carrying at the moment. I don't know what is happening in that health situation. The God that put you on that sick bed is saying that it's by his stripes as you were healed, you should begin to key into this, into that grace. 
and trust him for your healing. In that break, heartbreak, whatever situation it is, is it barrenness? Barrenness in all kinds. Labor cool zata. Why you tarry there? Be joyful. I can tell you that Joseph moved from there by faith. All he needed to hear was the direction. What is the spirit of God saying? Because that man wouldn't have been there by coincidence. He wouldn't have been there by himself. Bible says he's pointed him to his brothers. I heard them saying, we are going to Dotha. He could have heard something else, but he heard them. And this, 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 this vessel of God, Rekato Zampali Dakuza, he just picked this word and began to run with it. He ran, running into his destiny. And the next stage, we don't know what happens. He didn't know that that was going to happen. As he approaches, the Bible says, his brothers began to, to conspire. Hey! Imagine the distance between Shechem and Dota. Imagine between the distance between that lack. You are there, you don't have up to 100 francs to get on the taxi. To even get to the, to the place where you, you can attend that meeting. The meeting that is about to change your life. And you start trekking. You start trekking. You start trekking. Do you know that by the time you get there, that meeting has not started. They will wait for you. Because he did not give up because of 100 francs. See, if it is God that has told you, the God that has revealed to you, the faithful one of Israel, I tell you something. In this life of mine, I sat in an airplane, airport, airport. I stayed in an airport on the 31st of July, 30, 30, 29th of July, 2000. And, and 19. I slept there with my two boys for three days. They canceled our flights. The first one, we missed the flight. The next day, the flight was canceled. I don't know if the flight was canceled. I did not go back to my house. Do you know I locked up the door, dashed my things to somebody, gave them out, just anyhow, all I knew is that I am going to the UK. It is time. It was 10 years later. It was exactly 10 years in Germany. And the drive came like, it came like waterfall. It was like, I cannot say it. Like if I breathe one more day in Germany, I was going to suffocate. I left. Oh, people of God, the second time in the airport, three days. A big brother of mine from way back, from 2017, 2007, back in the day when I used to be in England, 2007, 2008. God bless him and bless his household. A big brother of mine, his name is Uncle Fritz. I call him Uncle Fritz, as I was always called. There was no way to even get on the next flight. I don't have a credit card that would that would get a flight on, get us immediate flight of that amount that we're standing in that airport. Me and my two sons. Do you know this man spent 600 euros? 600 euros. How do you explain that? He paid that flight there and then. He only heard my voice on the phone. I have not spoken to him in more than ages. It's only when I was coming to England, I was planning small, small, somewhere at the last minute. Hallelujah. 
before he heard from me. I've not heard from him for over, over, since as long as I have left England, about eight years or seven years or so. The last time we visited here, back then was 2013. I don't know. Yeah, we spoke to him or so. I don't know. I can't remember. But it's been a long time, at least seven years. And when God made that contact again, towards the days of me coming to England, just informing him that, ah, your petit stay is coming back, you know, and he has, that's always been his desire that he relocate and it has been everybody's desire. When it was time, I couldn't even stop myself because that was God's time. Guess what? I don't know how I made that reconnection to him at that moment in that month of July. I don't know how it came to me that I got his contact in the first place. He's been my friend on social media on Facebook. But never a day have I gone to say hello, grand friend, how, how is things? And, I only heard small stories about how things were not really, you know, balanced. Oh, glory to Jesus. Like every other life, people face challenges. I didn't know how to just break into that, you know, that um, that uh, segment of his life at the time. But somehow God gave me the grace. And I did. Guess what? We were two days in the airport. Me and my sons, we spend the night in the open. I could not even go to a hotel because the moment you are even in a hotel, can I, can I even afford the hotel? What are you even talking about? We are there. It's either we are there or we are in England. That was all I knew. <laughs> it is either I am in that airport or we are in England. The only place forward is to go back, go to England where God is telling me, this is where you are supposed to be. Redaka Zota, Trader of God, when the time comes, even you cannot stop it. Hallelujah. This guy, this uncle, this friend, this brother, I'm forever indebted to him. As I speak, the Spirit of God is bubbling in my heart because obviously it was not him that did what he did. Is the God in him that prompted him? Kali Zakatu. Do you know this man saw the bill? He went online himself, searched this flight, haunted this flight, searched and searched and searched and screenshotted back and forth. Hi! I'm asking myself, what is going on? Is this not somebody I've not even been in contact with for ages? Why would he even be opting to take this responsibility? Do you know he paid that flight cash and carry? Kundaza and sent us the details. <laughs> oh God. That is how we got on the flight. We got to England almost. Midnight, 31st of July, I will never forget. <laughs> the things of God. At this time, I was not even about scripture or I even know anything. What God is saying, what God is not saying. I was just as vulnerable as I would call it. I was like a, 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 a dove. Like I was just some... Whatever, whatever happens, let it happen. I just trusted God. I said, Lord, all I know is that my spirit has stopped where it is. It is not longer. This place is now the nest has become so small for the bed to stay in. Raku Dabazata. The nest has become too small for the bed. Sometimes, child of God, you don't stay in that nest. Don't wait for your own perfect time. God's time, it comes with, 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 with war. 
Have you seen the war between you and the world and the and everything and all the odds, every odd facing you? That is who God has called. Who is in the in the spirit of God? He who has the seed of God in them. Because 2007, 2008, this brother, this brother Fritz, he will take us to church. I was the choir, one of the choir leaders in the church in Reading. I served God with all of me and everything that fought my salvation at the time. God knew it all. He had, he had this time in plan. Because even in that times when I thought I was doing things by myself, fighting all of this, nothing was going to work. Ten years in Germany, nothing was going to work. I don't know how, I don't know why. But nothing, everything, everywhere, it was just like stop, stop, stop. It kept it won't it won't it won't just bear the fruit that i am waiting to see people of god i got up got on that flight i can't believe it what flight flight for almost 600 and something euros in cash in 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 <sighs> uncle fritz just heard my voice and he jumped to the occasion day one day two there were no flights he kept searching something could not stop him from stopping to stay. nothing could stop him from searching at the time, even at the airport, they limited internet, what is 30 minutes free internet. See, many things were against us going, coming. We had to go back. Me and this boys. When the Lord said, No, <laughs> it is not going back. All I knew in my last bower is that I am not going back. And when we got here, it did not look like it. All the plans I had, all the plans that I've been working over over the years in Germany, all the the, the imaginary the imaginary things I had in my head, in my own mind. <laughs> oh, black bachata. Let me tell you, God's plans has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you, your life. It has everything to do with God. This expected end that he's talking about is his glory. It's his expected plan. It is his plan. When we begin to understand that, you will not worry about whether is it barrenness, is it um, 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 stagnation, they call it some. You even begin to give names to situations. Some even is say unfruitfulness. It's a um, uh, failure. Rejection, they call it. Different names, they will call it. They will call you different names. But God's plan. <laughs> it's not psychology, it's not philosophy. He has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with God. Somebody write it somewhere. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with his glory. Guess what? <laughs> like Joseph. When he met his brothers, as his father went to Doha, daughter, Bible says he moved further, verse 17, to Dota, knowing that I have come, I have met my brothers. Hey, these are my blood brothers now. Eh? As 
as usual, business as usual. I've come to spy and see all the nonsense they do. You understand? Report cards. He has come to go and get information. Do you know what they are doing? He has arrived. The father said, go and check on your brothers. Because the, the father knows that he is more than a checker. He is CIA, FBI. <laughs> so much that is why they hated him. Because he was the rebuker. He was the upright one. The one who walked in righteousness. Ali Karobat Santa. So much when the brothers are coming, when he's coming, the brothers are up to only nonsense. They will begin to hide. They will begin to hide their back. Yeah. They will take it. Take it. Hallelujah. Because Joseph has showed them. Elder brothers will try to be hiding their business. They know that Joseph is the, you know, hallelujah. Many of us are like that. Somebody, you are like that. You've always had that tendency, that nature, right? From, from even in the world, you still have this act of not being able to be corrupt. You cannot be bought over. You can't, you can't compromise the things that don't move you. Because the purpose of God in your life. Because such people are always rejected, always called different, always silent, always put at the back, always fought against, always ganged up against. Many things will happen to you that will seem like, hey, I would have better been a stone or something. Why is it like this when it comes to me? Because the hand of God is on you. When the power of God has come over you, like now, the power of God has showed up. This is him in daughter. Boldly coming to meet his brothers. The brothers are saying that what? Here comes the dreamer. The dreamer is coming. That is it. He has come again to come and to come and show us off. Or maybe he has come to tell us another dream. Because as far as they know, God is he's always having dreams. He always has a dream or the other. They that don't dream, those who don't dream, those who don't fellowship, those who don't, you know, they've called themselves their own God, according to First Timothy. Hallelujah. Chapter 4. Lovers of themselves. When you say your own things, they are finding it, they say it's madness, they say you're foolish, you don't have sense, you don't know what you're talking how can he be dreaming that you are bound to him? This dreamer. Only his dream alone. Do you know that the Holy Spirit was even telling me that they are the ones that interpreted his dream? Not from his mouth did he ever say that they will bow to him. They are the ones who said it. They are the ones that said it. His brothers are the ones. Are you meaning that we are going to bow to you? Joseph did not say that with his mouth. They prophesied by themselves. Hallelujah. Uh, this is it, verse 8 of just, um, 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 Genesis chapter 37. Somebody, you read there, just verse 8 yourself. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? I don't know the ones interpreting the dream. Can somebody hear that? I don't know the ones pushing you forward. I don't know the ones saying it. They are the ones proclaiming. They are the ones declaring. They are, it has come out of the enemy's mouth. So the enemy already knows. He knows where God is taking you to. That's why he's trying to distract you. Trying to hold you up to that place of, of where the game is over. Keeping you in that nest when you have already outgrown it. Spiritually, you are not supposed to be in that place anymore. God has already moved you to the next dimension. But us, we want to keep staying there. Staying there. Holding on. Oh, it was going to work. Oh, I will do my best. Oh, I will add more time. Oh, I will give more affection. Oh, I will do this. It is not by your power, madam. It's not by your power, sir. Even if you have to stay there longer, as the Lord will have to reveal that to you. It is not by your own ways. It's by to be by the terms of the one that has put you there. If by the mercies of God, you are supposed to still stay in that place of, of history, it's past, it's already over. 
God has moved you from there already. Long time. In the spirit realm, you are no longer there. So if you are there, you are only suffering. Carrying more bondage. Stay in there. Somebody has already forgiven you. You are still there living in unforgiveness for yourself. Living in unforgiveness for the people. You are carrying that, you are carrying that, that coffin, that death sentence on your head. You have killed yourself. You are staying on that. Your heart is so bitter, full of all kind of malice. Bondage. God has said, let it go. Forget it. Forgive them. Leave them. Leave this place. They are not celebrating you yet. Leave from here. Come to where I will celebrate you. I have honored you. I have kept something better for you. I have a different, I have a, a new, a, a different, better purpose for you. Come and follow this side. You say, eh, eh, it's here. I want to stay here. I don't want to go anywhere. Father, let me try again now. Lord, put, let me put power. That time you are never praying to God again. That's your praying. You are talking, it's yourself that is praying. You are talking to yourself. Because the Holy Spirit is not in that kind of prayer. The Holy Spirit is not back in that prayer. He has already told you. All the signs are clear. The revelations, you even see dreams. There are things God has shown you, but you blind if you choose to block your eyes. You say, no. This one, you interpret it yourself if Whereas you get the clear interpretation, the Holy Spirit has interpreted it to you. The moment you woke up, you get it. You get it clearly that this is what it means. Is it a? It's a sign of. It is ended. It's a sign of, tarry. It's a sign of forward. It's a sign of of patience. Kalaru bakazante. God reveals to redeem. There is a solution in that revelation. Hallelujah. They will say we are not going anywhere. It's here we want to stay. I can I cannot go. Eh? It's my childhood boyfriend. It's my childhood uh, man, sweetheart. You are doing cow stay. Stay in there. Stay in there. Stay in there. Why in that childhood time? Is it three abortions or two or how many? That it led you to go and do. So that 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 calamity is holding you there, is standing against you, against your marriage. That blood that was shed is working against that marriage. It's working against that possibility in fact that's not who god is even seeing with you anymore and even if the mercy of god has to come in deliverance has to take place but you say hey who will marry me again where will i go to ah if i don't stay with this woman with this girl how can i have another person you have limited god you have put Marriage. Maybe God didn't have any plan that you marry in this lifetime. Is that not Paul who said, as for him, he's not interested. I'm not with marriage. God, I think he's the one who said that to himself. It's the Holy Spirit that gave him that, that option. Gave him that grace. It's not of his own desire. It's God's desire for him to serve him like that. He had to take the grace of God, the will of God for him to live that way. So it is the will of God that God will not allow you to, you will not marry. It is well. He will grant you the grace. Not everybody is supposed to be married. Or oh, not everybody must marry their high school, high school sweethearts. Hallelujah. So you see, it's either God's plan or it's God's plan. Because our plans will not take up our own plan 
It's like you plan, you go back to the architect, get your board, you start again, you draw a perfect drawing. You will get somewhere, you see that eh? there's a block that did not fit right. You go and start again, start again, drawing again. That is when God needs to come. You need to seek God. Something is missing. As long as joy is missing in that thing, as long as peace is missing in that thing, something big. In fact, God is not in it. When there is no peace there, the peace of God does not come with human understanding. It is not something you can explain. Hallelujah. And we see how Joseph crunched himself into his brother's hands by going to Dotha. If it's by his own will, he will likely turn back and go back to his father's arms. His father's loving arms. And go and stay there and be doing boy. Fine boy, loving boy, boy, father's daddy's baby, you know? Daddy's sweet boy. Daddy's favorite. It was time to grow. So time for training. Time for the next revelation. Time for the next step. Zota. The Bible says his brother saw him and they, they, they gave him the ultimate name, the dreamer. You better fall in the line of dreamers because dreamers, surely their dream comes to pass. Have you been dreaming? If you are not dreaming, better go and be asking God. God, show me dreams about my life. Reveal to me Katu Zaraba Kandere Kazopata. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Reveal to me the hidden and secret things about my life, the mysteries of my existence. Lord, Rekaho Zeteya Kambazata. Even as I'm married, you did not reveal. I did not come and ask you. As I had all of these children, I did not ask you. This job is not you that even I didn't come to seek you. This place that I am, this way, in fact, everything. I don't know. Please just show me. Lord. Open my 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 my, my page. Hallelujah. And Daniel 2 22. It tells us how, how that God would reveal all truth. Even the enemies. Hallelujah. Even the things that are not right for me. Hallelujah. That Daniel 2 22. He revealed the deep and sacred things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Verse 21 says, And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. That is the word of God. Daniel 2, 21 to 22. Hallelujah. So for a dreamer like Joseph, he had no fear. Because God kept showing him things. I'm sure that morning he saw himself. He didn't have the opportunity to speak out the dream. The father just pushed him out. You know, Kalibako <laughs> Zataka. He got there. They said, Dreamer has come. Here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him. Let us slay him. There is no word that he no use. Let us, let us, let us just bundle him. Let us lynch him. That is how your haters, those that call themselves haters, let us choke him. Let him have no voice. Let us stop him. What is she trying to do? What does she think she wants to become? It is not for you to decide what I become or what you become. It is not unto you. Baliria Kabozata. Let us choke that dream that he's having. Let us see how he is going to dream again. Verse 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into this into some pits. And we will say some evil beast that devoured him. And we shall see that. We shall see what will become of his dreams. Hi. Somebody. 
I don't know what you're thinking when you are hearing this. I don't know what. I'm sure the Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody. These are your brothers. Those who are supposed to back you up. Those who are supposed to help you. Those who we are looking up to. Your elder brothers. There was no younger person there. Your brothers, your best friends, those who eat with from the same pan, those you share account details with, those that know all the CVs where you've sent your CVs to, those that know the, the in fact, all your dirty games, the one that knows you from the inside out. These are the people. Those that smile with you in your face. And as you turn your back. They say, look at this one. You see? They are just, just in their midst. Being nice and being kind and being everything that you want to be. Yeah, you can be. Because of the life, the seed of God in you. Because of the plan of God for you. But they misunderstand that. And their misunderstanding is necessary to take you to the dream that God has been showing you. Kalabu Kandaza. He says, I will set the table before you right in the presence of your enemies. Without these enemies, where is this table going to stand now, my dear? Without these household enemies, without these challenges, without this, this, those that said you cannot do it, those that challenge you, I tell you that, as for you, we have our written you, we have forgotten about this one. This one is always making noise, talking too much, and never getting anywhere. Always dreaming, coming with dreams. Always coming with all these visions. They have written you off. Hallelujah. Check out what happens next. They say they will dig it, they will throw him in a pit and forget about him there. They will slay him, dump him in a pit. You know what is a pit? <laughs> a pit is an endless, it's a place of torments, it's a place of of junk. Place where they have they have it's an abominable place it's a place of sadness a place that is almost called a place of no return Kim Baraku a place of no return according to his brothers hallelujah thanks for joining in everybody wherever you are joining from your blessing in the name of Jesus a place of 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 know how to come out from a pit it will only take a miracle for anyone to come out of a pit in this case the pit is a former well a well that has dried up and behold as they planned this the elder brother showed up and says he heard he them why did he hear them God made it for him to hear. He made it. He made that error. That why the enemies are planning against you? Why they are conspiring against you? Why they sit and 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 gossip on you and you know bring all this funny stuff about you that you are innocently there. You don't know anything about. You keep focusing on what God is. Focusing on your own life. Focusing on what God is doing. Focusing on the move of God, focusing on how to how to please God and please God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Reuben heard them. Let us share no blood of our brother. This blood is going to remain on our heads. Let us throw him in that way in the pit. Let us throw him. Let us cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness. Hmm. 
Hallelujah. Because on his own, he had plans to come back there and rescue him and take him back to his father. <laughs> I just want you to see how God is working, how the plan of God is working in your life, how that place of pain, that place of lack, that place of abject, abject need of something, even maybe bread is difficult to even get. And you are counting on God, surely He will come true soon and soon. This is somebody with his own brothers being planned to cast in a in a in a pit, a pit in the wilderness. Not only a pit, but a pit that is in the wilderness. You know what is a wilderness? So they have to make that effort of some people who go as far as take your name to to the shrines they will go as far as in connecting in, you know in chanting what do they call it again incantations over your head over your knee oh people do strange things to stop you Wilderness. They're going to throw you in the pit in the wilderness. And the brother has plans to come to that wilderness and take him out of that well, of that pit, and take him back to his father's house. Do you know he has already entered the pit? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And as well as the Reuben gave the commandment, and elder brother, they follow the orders of the brother. Alaku kamba zita kabo zita. Reya kato. You see, he said, and they took him and cast him into a pit. So what they said, they also did. So when somebody threatens your life, when somebody says something, you better take them for it. What they have said. When somebody says they are going to kill you. When they say they are going to destroy, when they say there is nothing good about you, when they say you are this and that, you better take their word for it because they will definitely do what they have said. The heart of man, he doesn't say something, he didn't, he didn't mean it. The Bible says our tongue, either it is creative or it is destroyed. Whatever comes out of the tongue, be very careful how you speak, how you say things. Because as your mouth has said it, your heart that has conspired it will definitely show up what you have said. You get to do that. So God's mercy. We need the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, what the brothers are planning him. His own brothers. I can imagine him in their midst, struggling. Oh, Father, can this be possible? What is happening? Is it not me that dream? Is it not me that he showed me dreams like this? How come my own brothers are about to kill me? They are going to throw me in the well, in this pit, Father. Lord, is it not you that showed me dreams? How about those dreams? Reda kabo zala kandu kazate. Can imagine him asking? Asking God, and of course, that is what he did. Looking at all the wolves against you, all the odds against you, everything is fighting you. All you can do is to call the name of the Lord, and he shall be saved. And the Bible well said the brother had planned to come and take him back, so he given another commandment that they should put him in the pit in the wilderness. The pits that he already ordered, he arranged already. Reuben. And that is what happened. And they threw him in there. And Jesus, who has put you in that place, sometimes as the Lord allowed it to happen, unless the Lord allows it, 
No man can take the place of God. So the Lord who allowed it to happen like this, who brought him in the first place right there, surely allowed him to go into the pits by his own brothers. That doesn't look like the plan of God, isn't it? It doesn't look like the dreams that he dreamt. It doesn't look like the favorite son of, of his father. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, child of God. It will never, it may never look like it. You can even come face to face with death like this on that hospital bed. Reading and everybody has left you. Kill like a bozotu. You scroll through your phone, there's nobody to call. Oh, yes. That is how the work of God is. That's how God works it out. That is how the plan of God looks like. When you begin to, to search left, right, center, you do 360. Search button. And there is nobody. I mean, absolutely nobody. This is how he is in that pit. Joseph is in the pit. The only thing you can look around him and see is a wall. The wall of a pit. A pit is a place where they have left all the refuge has gone there. If there was water there. To the glory of God, God planted that the one in the wilderness. Wilderness is a place where there is no water. So God plants even that. But it might not look like it. It might look like I am suffering. I don't have a job. I don't have a family. I don't have children. I don't have nothing to write up home about. But you have God. Joseph was with God. Kalu Kandaba Zata. Rekalu Baandiri Yakoba Zete. Because it takes a dream that God has shown him. And what, just one dream was enough for him to know that God is with him. That dream has to come to be. That is enough for him to work with. One encounter changes everything. Karakoba Zanta. One encounter. You don't need a hundred encounters. One is good enough. One that God has revealed himself to you, has shown you this one. It is enough to hold on to that and keep pressing and keep pressing, pressing on that one. There is one encounter that I had. God knows I would likely want many, many encounters. But that one it's like it's today it's like a, i still see him see it like this that is that is a good enough for a lifetime for the grace of god to to come through in the, an encounter the woman with the issue of blood the bible says her faith led her in the multitude of thousands of people she has mentioned in the bible today because of her faith, because of the encounter. Bible says she touched just the hem of his garment. She had in her knowing that only at the touch of his garment. The glory of God is so powerful, so mighty, so, so great that it will only take a peep into the realm of faith. Faith just a monster seed. Kundala Zata. For this woman to feature in the Bible, it took a faith of monster seed. She just touched his garments. That was her encounter. That was all. Transposed her life and put her in the scriptures today. You and I will talk about the woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. There were other sicknesses there. There were people with leprosy, people with different, you know, broken hearts, broken, you know, different sorts of sicknesses. HIV, name it, but no faith. They don't have faith. 
waiting for man of God to go and climb on the mountain. Barrenness, all sort of altars fighting you. You are waiting for man of God to come. It's your faith. It takes only your faith for that encounter to be revealed to you. It took revelation for that woman to know that if everybody is gathered, he's talking about this one man, this Jesus that I'm talking about. From era of 2,000 years ago till now, they're talking about the same man, same person. I must surely find out. <laughs> I must surely go and know about it. That's enough for that woman to have walked in to a multitude of people who have been with him. Those who have been going with him for 5,000 meals, the other 5,000 he fed them. Oh, at the banks of Galilee, or oh, at the, 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 the pool of Bethesda, they were always following you there. But they still carry their sickness with them. They were, ne they were not healed. The Bible says in his hometown we could not do much. They did not believe. The one woman coming from God knows where, they did not share her location, where she came from. But it was precise. That at the touch of the hem of his garments, monster seed of faith that can move mountains. She got her deliverance, her healing, her restoration. Hallelujah. This is Joseph in the well. What do you think will be working in his mind? I have a dream. I have a dream. He could only remember his dream. I have a dream. The dream, Father, you showed me a dream. I know that that dream is not in this place. I know this place is not that dream. I know that you will surely take me to that dream. Bukali Zata or Rambo, you should have a dream that you hold on to. That you put before God and tell him, Lord, you know that before I was forming my mother's womb, you knew me. So it cannot be like this. That is what you have said in the world. So this peace, this condemnation, this rejection, this abandonment, this forgetful, forget it, forgot this sickness. Ah, this is not what you said. This is not what you said. This is not how you said it. I reject it. Any peace that has come to stagnate your life, to hold you down. Oh, it is a catapult to the next level. Every setback from his father's house, favorite child, coat of many colors, um, la la land, blah blah blah, and lake is here, combatter. The next place is a pit. No, now, father, this is not how you said it. This is not a dream I saw. That is what you have said in that pit. Telling God, somebody will surely come here. You will shame somebody because that dream that I saw. And you did not show me what you showed me again and again. That dream was come to us because you showed it to me. And the Bible says his brothers. <laughs> they took him out of that pit by themselves and sold him to the Ishmaelites. The traders of the wilderness, the desert between Egyptians and all of that. The next thing you know, he found himself in Potiphar's Potiphar's house. This time around, things got a bit better. Hallelujah! He was elevated in the house of Potiphar too. He's there, knowing that ah, I have arrived. It is fine, no problem. At least I'm not in my father's house. At least I'm not in the pit. I am round here. Hey. He did not forget his humble beginning. He did not forget where God has taken him from. Most of us, when we get to the next level, we now say, wow, well, we are on our own. Small light has come. Small anointing that the Lord has given you. People now have to walk under your feet. God has put more oil on your head. You have become God. To forget God. To forget the one that is the anointing. The one that is, is giving of your life. Hallelujah. You were crying. Oh, I need a child. I need a child. Oh, Father, bless me with child. Oh, Karabo Zata. No, you are not serving.
following God again. You are no longer on the altar looking for God left and right. Father, if you don't bless me, as you bless Hannah, you become Hannah at Shiloh. Father, bless my womb. Give my own child. Give my own child. I want to carry my own somewhere. And God bless you. The next thing you know, you forgot how you were. Your tears were your prayer points. You did not need to even pray again. Tears was enough. God was cleaning your tears. And suddenly, you see, that's why God will tarry us. God will train us. God will keep us in a place until that pit was time for him to leave that pit. God would have left him there for more days. God did not send him back to his father's house as his brother was suggesting that he would come and steal him and take him back to them. No, that was not the plan of God. <laughs> that is not the plan of God for you. So as you are looking for comfort, the more the, the path gets crooked, the more it is difficult, the higher the glory. The bigger the problem, the greater the testimony. The deeper the pit, the higher height you come out, the higher the heights that you come out from. And the glory of God is made manifest because of you there is a testimony somebody will get to hear that indeed this place that i am it is not forever i'm going to come out of this place because of your testimony so it makes no sense keeping testimonies to yourself god has done marvel for you god has moved you from a place god has healed you god has given you peace god has restored you god has delivered you and you sit quiet you don't go to give glory to god so that somebody to hear and know that truly this is their place that where they are, that pit where they are in, they can come out of there. That tunnel is not forever. There is light at the end of it. That is not a destination. Hallelujah. The Bible says he took her, it, they took him all the way to Egypt, into the house of Potiphar. Harakubada <laughs> Zante. Leila Katuzu Atababa. Hmm. Chapter 39, verse 4. He says, And Joseph found grace in his sight in the house of Potiphar. Verse 2 says, uh, 39, verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. So everything can leave you. Let the Holy Spirit not leave you. The only one you can hold on. The only, the most prized treasure is your salvation. Is the presence of God. Kalu karabazate. I miss every trial, trial. You hear the psalmist who say in Psalm 31, 51, say, take not your presence from me. David said, if you don't, uh, Moses will say, if you don't go with us in this wilderness, Lord, if you are not going with us, me, I'm not going. So if you are not going ahead of me, I don't have a plan of my own. I don't know what I'm going to do there. <laughs> and he became a pillar by day, by cl of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. That was a negotiation of Moses. That is how God wants us to negotiate with him. Tell him that because you have preserved me, you have kept me. This dream that you have shown me, I am not going to get to anywhere without your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Rather, fill me with your spirit so that I would accomplish, I will get to the expected end. That was the case of, the, of Joseph. His master, an Egyptian, can tell that God is with him. A stranger, someone who worships a different altar, who worships the, the, the pyramids of Egypt. Those ones that have different talisman around their neck. They worship gold, they worship sun, they worship 
all of these things that you hear, all these random things you hear around, that some are calling gods and all of that. When God has already abolished all of those idol worship, God says, have no other God beside me. Hallelujah. So God is bringing them to Egypt to show his glory. To take over mankind, to tell them that he is God. He is the one and only true God. Through the life of Joseph. That is how he came to be. Hallelujah. Rekaba zota rinda kibia kaloza. Zekeya munti akazite. And Joseph found grace. See. Verse 31, verse, chapter 39, verse 1, it says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of the Pharaoh, captain of the guard on Egyptian, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither. So from a pit to a captain's house, the first commander, commander-in-chief, you see the grace of God, you see the power of God. Are you seeing how God is elevating from the pit to a slave, a slave with standard to train him on leadership? And the Bible says, Potiphar put everything in, in his hands, everything about his household. Joseph was the one running his house. Can you imagine? So sometimes it is not how it looks like. Most of the times, it's not even how we... In fact, 99% of the times, it's not about how you should see it. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. You need God. You need the Spirit of God. You need the Spirit of Revelation. You need the presence of God all the time. The Bible says he found favor. He found grace. In a strange land like Egypt, he has never been there. His father does not know he's in Egypt. As a matter of fact, that brought him the coat of many colors, soaked in blood, claiming that his son has died. So his father is mourning him. His father knows he has died. He's the dead. He has already rot in the in, in, in the ground by then. But God is working. The plan of God is still there, it's still on. Jacob's plan, Jacob's promise, Jacob's blessings that God had promised him. When he fought with a man in chapter 32 of Genesis, he fought with God and God said, I bless you. I bless your seeds. I bless. So looking at all his 10 wayward sons, the elder sons are wayward people. He doesn't seem to figure out how that will happen. Rachel, his favorite wife has, been, has died long dead. His favorite son has died. So it is almost looking like, what is the blessing? What is the plan that you said? Are you seeing the power of God? God kept his son's life from him because the Jacob that we know will go to Egypt and carry his son and bring him back. <laughs> Jacob will go and look for his son and come home. His favorite son. Bible even said all his life is mourned. He mourned his son. He kept mourning. He kept mourning. He kept mourning. He did not stop mourning. His family will gather around him to comfort him. Still, he did not move him. He did not have to move him. Because Jacob was all he had. Jacob, I'm uh, sorry, Joseph was, was his, his life. Imagine an old man, the child of his old age. The favorite child, the only one that was upright, the rest of the brothers were, you know, killing people, causing havoc everywhere, fighting one another. Notorious. Hallelujah. But God did a mystery in the life of the son of his old age. Right from when he kept his mother to have him only at that old age. The favorite wife, Rachel, could not bear a child. Her sister was cheating children. Hallelujah. Why she sat there? Nothing. 
and all of them came out anyhow where what where what jaga jaga as we call it <laughs> that was the plan of god it doesn't look like it until his glory shows up and you now confirm and say ah so this life actually is not my life a life you are living whether you like it or not it is not your own to be commanding and to be saying my career is this one my soul is so it is me my money is my money my children is my children it is not yours madam it's not yours sir. it is not mine it is not yours that is what it is this one is, is actually saying to us in the life of joseph living from a pit straight up to a captain's house does it begin to explain does it make sense does it make sense that's how it shouldn't make sense to me for all he knows he's going is a slave in egypt they will go and stay in the barracks of slaves hallelujah stay there slave But the Bible says he found grace in the house of the captain of Pharaoh, the first in command of Pharaoh. That is where he landed. That's where God sent him to. The next thing you know, he has sat there. He knows all, all is well. But he, he did not leave the presence of God. He kept hoping, looking at it and seeing, is this that dream? Am I already in that promise? Is this the 11 shift and the moon and star bowing to me? And so he still knew that no, it's higher than this. It's bigger than this. He kept hoping in God. King Barak, who's that? The next thing you know, he found himself in a prison. So many a times they will accuse you, they will point fingers at you, they will even call you names that you don't even know what that those kind of names ever existed. But that's what they tag you with. People who don't know you, that don't even know you. Those who don't even, they don't know you. They don't know anything about you. But what they have been whispered to, that's what they call you. And you are there, you have no clue. You are just there. Living your life for the one that has preserved you. That has shown you that promise, that dream. The one that has said that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you your defender, the provider, your deliverer, the joy of sal your salvation. What he's saying is what you're focusing on. That is what David, I mean, Joseph did. Joseph kept on and the Bible said he was recognized. This grace, the good things began to happen in the house of Potiphar because Joseph was there. Joseph, Potiphar's band was multiplying. His business was flourishing. That is, you come in a place, you get married to a man, and things begin to wonderfully happen in his life. You marry this woman, and wonderful things happen because you carry the banner of God. You carry the presence of God because you have the grace of God, the favor of God is in you. That is how Joseph walked from a pit to the glory of the home of a captain. Kalako Zata. So don't think that as you are there, being a servant, a house boy, or a house girl, one day you will not be surprised that your master will call you and say he's sending you to university. He wants to for, um, 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 further your studies. He wants to even will you his business to you. Oh, yes. That is what happened to, to Joseph in the house of Potiphar. The Bible says he was in charge of everything. He was made governor in the house of Potiphar. From a pit to a governor of the house. <laughs> he governed the house so well that everything happened so, so wonderfully in the eyes of Potiphar. And Potiphar said, this man has the grace of God with him. Potiphar could tell that this one is not an ordinary man. He's a man of God. He's a child of God. Those are the fruits of righteousness. That when you are somewhere, the Bible says in Matthew 5, blessed are they that are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. You bring the kingdom of God at your place of work. You bring the kingdom of God 
in your church, in that choir, where everybody is doing whatever they are doing, they are doing, see me, I see you, amen, um, Christianity. You are walking in the righteousness. Hallelujah. In that night shift where you are the next day, you are the night shift. You are around those old mothers, those women that are sick, those ones that are on life support. You go and sit there. You are reading scriptures today. You don't know. Know today that you are restoring life. You are actually winning souls on the last bet unto God. That is how you bring the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Joseph had the presence of God with him. And Potiphar could not let him out of his sight. All he knew is that he put everything in the hand of Joseph. But look at him. Fine boy. Fine boy too now has caused problem for you. But he did not allow fine boy to kill him, to destroy him, to stop the power of God, to, to, to take him to the world. Handsome, looking all six pack and whatever. You have all the blessings. God has blessed you so much. Woman with so much beauty and all of this grace. Your beauty is grace. Not to be selling your body. Not to, to cause men to go to hell. You are not supposed to be serving the seven mammon and Jezebel and all of these evil spirits. He did not allow the spirit of the Egyptians who have all kinds of, of gods that you can name. Joseph did not bow to Baal. Hallelujah. In the midst of the temptation, of the wife of Potiphar. His next training was to test him, test his libido, test his 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 glory, because he was a man of stature. He had look good, great looks. He was handsome. I think this time was he was about nineteen or twenty years old. Kaliki, imagine the, the the youthful exuberance, the 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 the, the, the hormones flying here and there. But he kept himself. But you who has small, nice car, you have a mini, mini, a nice, beautiful Ferrari, nice, you know, a little light that God has placed in your life. You bring all different kinds of calamity to yourself. You invite different spirits by allowing, hallelujah, the enemy to, to sabotage the glory of God in your life which God has placed in you. you. Drop it on the laps of women. Different kinds of things you want to do. Listening to all kind of garbage. What makes you laugh? What what ignites your own laughter? Your own fun is, is strange. Hallelujah. The fun of the world, that is what you chose to go do. In these days and time, there are terrible things. Terrible this is how Joseph found himself face to face with the beauty of this woman. The woman, day one, day two, day three, day forever that he was in the house. I'm sure he did not have peace. This woman kept tormenting him, kept asking him, lay with me. Denounce your statue. Denounce your 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 Christianity, your salvation. Put down your guards and be with me. Fornicate with me. Cause adultery with me. In fact, betray your master. Hey, this was like the end of it. This, I mean, just imagine. And Joseph said, Hey, how can you how can you? Even utter such a thing. How many men will not jump to that? You are a woman. By night, you are a crawling snake. You are everywhere. From one bed to another. At the end of the day, you turn around and see 
you are by yourself. At the end of the day, no man is coming for you. At the end of the day, you are just, you start regretting. And let that regret, let that regret be, be not of worldly sorrow. Let the Lord grant you the grace to turn to him at that point. In the name of Jesus. I know it can be very tempting. I know being young is not, it's not, it's a very challenging time. It's a very challenging period. Or even being beautiful. <laughs> uh, I can tell you about it. From now till today. All kind of spirits come to inhibit themselves. You know. Jezebel spirit, marine spirit, serpentine spirit. They're everywhere. Familiar spirits. Spiritual husbands, they have married more than 10 of them. You know. That is what Joseph did not allow to get into him. Because the moment you fall into that sin, oh, kitty, kitty, kubachati, rakatabo, santa. Those spirits, as they are calling you, beckoning on you, to dress like, like what? Like you are going to, to swim, you are going to shower, you are going to a bath. You and the person that is in a bath, they are in a shower, in the, you are, there is no difference. We were there, we know what we are talking about. I'm not saying that I'm a perfect person. You don't need to go too far, just go behind my my backdated, my photos, my pictures, my things. It takes the grace of God for us to sit here and begin to utter this kind of <laughs> kind of words for anyone to hear. Because we have been there. Is it bomb shots? Is it what? What do you want to mean? What do we know where? What did I know where? What is it? Who had the body from it according to us? But that's not the glory of God. That's not what God wants us to be. So by the time he has called us out like this, if it's not for us to sit quiet anymore, we don't have to be quiet. Hallelujah. Because it takes that spirit, that Jezebel spirit of you, in you for you to dress like that. It is the spirit in you that you are obeying. The idol in you that you are serving. That, that is your God. How you dress is your God. <laughs> that line of makeup that you wear, you I mean they cannot even recognize you. You don't know yourself between you the, the, that was born by your mother and the one that you have made up. Those are marine spirits, it doesn't argue with you. That is facts. I know what I'm saying. We'll come for another day on that one. Glory to Jesus. But I'm so happy that the Lord has led me to. To, to utter, to mention. Hallelujah. So nowadays he's prompting long videos like this. <laughs> On my own, I knew I was coming to sit here maybe maximum one hour, 50 or 10 minutes or so. But this is it. It's three hours already. I don't even know how I have the, the strength to sit here. I'm not sitting here. It's not me talking. Glory to Jesus. Balika Lokuabazanta. Joseph in the hands of Possifa's wife. Turn down. He said, No ma. So much grace. So much respect. Oh, I honor my God. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I cannot, I cannot betray God with my body. My body is a temple of God. I honor my body. Likarabozan teki kakotaya. A woman that the husband would would they have an issue or something happened along the line and it didn't work anymore and she is by herself. A widow, or likewise a man, the people that will come to come and take advantage of that person, they are the very close people, his friends, his his even even say his brothers. That is how vulnerable you become. You become. A tool for the enemy to talk to left, right, and center. So most times you read some of the stories on internet, you see videos, you see issues, societal problems. Because that has happened to you, you now become you become so so spiritually 
bankrupt. That any man will have his way. Any man, any woman will just pop into your life and pop out as they like. Do whatever they like with you. Because of what? Because you are in the pits. Didn't you hear that Joseph was in the pits? That pit was to glorify God. That situation, that circumstance, that story, that brokenness, that abandonment, that, that abomination. That man is calling abomination. It is the glory of God. Oh yes, I stand to tell you today as a testimony. It is a testimony for God's glory. Child of God, woman of God, daughter of Zion. Guide yourself with all, all virtue. God can make it for you. God will put you together. Run to God. Seek him because that is the time he allowed that pit for you to glorify him. Nobody created you for, 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 for their own glory. It's God who created you. Your story is God's glory. It is not time for you now to be jumping from one bed to another. For you to be receiving phone calls from any Jack and Jill and Jerry and whatever. This was the highest temptation of Jacob and Joseph. Joseph, what is the last point? Because looking at the glory of the master's house, all of the, 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 the decoration, he was in charge of everything. So God took him from the pit and straight up to governance in a house of such high standard, high caliber. Nowadays, even the driver of your family house, even the housemate wants to wear the, 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 the master's clothes and go and sleep, take women, take advantage of women and take advantage of, of, of that car that he drives. He will go by night and they say he should close, he should go and keep the car. That is when he wants to sell his soul. Because the moment you allow your body to go under the sleigh of the enemy, as you allow your body you see your body. You see this your body like this. Rela <laughs> Kabo. The Bible did not mean words about it. Your bo body is the temple of God. Try it. Your body is so sacred to God. That is this contact point between you and the reality and the real world. Because on your own. On, on, as, as far as God is concerned, His spirit in you is the glory that they are not seeing. So your body is a container of the glory of God. That's where God's glory is resting. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that you have to, you are taking the mirror, you are mirroring Christ, you are mirroring God every time. Every time you come in His presence, every time you are seeking Him, you are taking the form of God. In the supernatural, inside of you, the temple, Lakaru Bazata. So once you are defiling that body, anytime you put that body to subject onto any bodily sin of fornication, adultery, those are counted as deadly sins. We are not saying that other sins are not regarded. Hallelujah. But these are the deadly sins against your own body, you sin against yourself. That is what Joseph looked at and said, No. I better denounce this office. I rather walk and be jobless. I will not bow to you, madam. And the woman set him up and transports him. Father, God just carried him out of there and put him next place. Can do Zarabakato. So if you deny corruption, if you do not take bribe, if you do not go and put your children in the in the higher school. That school where, oh, where every teacher there is a pedophile. It's not because you could not afford it. Because you have heard the story and because God has revealed to you that these places are not comfortable for, for children. And if you are there and things are like that are happening and you decide to keep quiet, you are not exposing. 
you are worse than the person doing the act. Places where they traffic children, you are in a restaurant, you have started working in that restaurant, you started your unemployment there. The next thing you discover that there is something spiritual going on. People come here, they think they are, they are, they are toothpick or something and they are manifesting that, doing strange things with it. And you are a child of God, you are there. You compromise, you have this information, you don't, deny, you don't expose it. You are worse than the person that is running that restaurant. Glory to Jesus. That's what Joseph did. Joseph did not bow to the lapse of a woman for a moment of three minutes and you sell your soul to the devil. Joseph said, no mother, how can I bring this honor to a man that has shown me so much goodness? A man that has kept me, given me so much honor over his home. How can I even as much as defile my body? The temple of God. More so he knew that the a dream that he saw his brothers bowing has not come to pass. So this woman cannot stop that dream. He knew that if he bows to this woman, that dream can never come again. That dream will take a different turn. That dream will, will, will even just say bye-bye to him or something like that. And it will take another century for God to remember you, to give you another dream, to give you another, to refix that destiny. You will have mercy, yes. You will come and you will see, but you will pay for that which you have done. Oh, God is a just God. He is very just. His mercy is not foolishness. The love of God is not foolishness. It's not weakness. Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, that he will chastise that who he who he loves. Unless you call yourself a bastard. They who he does not chastise, who he does not, he will, they are bastards. Those who have not accepted him in their lives. He will leave them to be taken from the enemy. Hallelujah. Collecting success and saying success is, is not what God has given you. God doesn't have time for them. Hallelujah. His grace is for everybody. But his blessings are for his children. Thank you, Jesus. His grace is for everybody. But his blessings are for his children. They that have come to the diligence of seeking him in their hearts. Hallelujah. Chapter 4, Hebrews. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. Demand and the breath of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Just like in the beginning, where I was, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Just breathe your name upon me. Mm -hmm. Just breathe your name upon me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Kandazi Kiliabo. Oh, thanks for joining everyone. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. Sakandu Kuaraba. Nina Lola. Um, oh, so my bro. <laughs> Paul Bilimba, Bernard Moore. Mm. Kaliza Kuandale Kiyabo Zata. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Ah, see, I wasn't even the book of Jesus. Hey, people of God. Reta bo zanda li karabo zete ki ya kunda raba zete ya kuri ya makazi ya kondo ya kaza batili ya kuri ya chata. Eberi katabo zwa katabo yeni kili ya bukandala ya bazate. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Lekande ibiza koro para bukoro ya bakande zakate. Lekatala bo zampo zeta kale bazakari ya kondi ya bazala kate. Ya candy, a carrier, because they are called the Abukuri, and because they are kind of by a cause of the Akaria. The Lakalia Baba Kadia Pokos and Daria Kulia Basara Kandi, the Akaria. Zita la Pon de Kibizara Bodri, a kind of the Akaro Puya Bosantari. The Lia Kondiria Bakali Pia Puria Bakandi Zakuria. Oh, yeah, I was looking at the wrong verses. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So verse chapter five of Hebrews, verse four and uh, verse eight. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, uh, verse eight, sorry, though he were a son, yet lent he obedience by the which by the things which he offered, suffered, and being made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that. Mm, that's not it. And no man take it this way. Mm. And also Christ glorifying not himself. Takali bese akaro batari mbe akapu zeketa. Leveche deke abu hongko wabakara. No sombe. In chapter 5. Fakule biyakunda rabaka zakata. Lili kala kuda ba ya kuri ya basi ya mbele ya masuku le ya katala masuku zevara kuri ya katapa ya kuri ya bakari ya basi ya ndari ya mukosi ya katapa ya ya kari ya kandi ya kundo ya basi ya kuri ya bakando ya bakari ya kandi ya kandi zekele lipi za kala kuri ya kala kosi kinde ra ba kandi ya basi ya kijita Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord for you all. I'm trying to get this picture right. I don't want to miss it again. Rikanda zuku wadabala di kivi ya kandaru wa kundiri ya basu kala kachete di zanto kuzu wa tarama lengendi kato uzu wa kanda pati kiri patazu kuta. Ipidi kala poko kita kifiti di kita bukutu kwa za katali ya za katali. Supisakala <laughs> 
It was further away in the book of um sorry, God bless you. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The all the glory, Lord. Tale Katazu to Arabatas in the Akabaze Kati. Leda Alivia Kundu Bashatari Bazakalo. Ah, the Spirit of God kept telling me it's further away. I kept going back. Uh, just give God the glory. Thank you, Father, for this opening. So is in verse 12 of Hebrews, verse 6. Verse 5 of Hebrews 12. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Hallelujah. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, when the Lord rebukes us. Because he loves us. So when we have lost a certain so also what I was just saying earlier on, and as Joseph was able to to withstand and to not yield unto the temptation of Potiphar's wife, not allowing himself to be defied and fail the test of God, fail the training, fail the, the hallelujah. Hallelujah. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, chastening, and scourgeth every son whom he received. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth well with you as with sons. For whom, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? What child are you if God doesn't correct you? If God doesn't test you, if God doesn't correct you and bring you back on the drawing board every time, every now and then. So you might just go back on the drawing board again. So that was Joseph almost having to go back to go and start dreaming again. Dreaming the dream against his. Hallelujah. Altering his destiny because of Potiphar's wife's demands. Because of Potiphar's wife, because of that that issue, Hariba Kato Zanda. Oh, you couldn't have children in the time that you you so desired, you wanted so you want so much. You are being pressured. Hallelujah. To bear children. At the end of the day, you go and get your driver <laughs> to do the work of your husband because you don't want to wait upon the Lord. According to you, you are trying to help God. You are trying to support an issue. Costing yourself into deep secrecy. Into a bigger problem. Whereas God's time, God's plan is still in the process. But you have done shortcuts. May God give somebody understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We shall carry and we shall be, we shall we shall receive the chastening of the Lord. When we fall, we rise again. When you fall, you rise again. Hallelujah. It is divine to be forgiven. 
to air is human. Glory to Jesus. Verse 8, it says, But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. <laughs> then verse 9, Paul is saying, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we have them reverence shall we not much rather be in the subjection unto the father of spirits and life will you not rather obey the one that is from above the spirit of the, the commandments of god the statutes of god will you not rather preserve and reserve and keep your life of virtue for god than to obey your father of the earthly realm is saying that it's rather better to fear the one, hallelujah, the one above all, the creator, the one who is giving you the life, the one who even gave you the father that you're obeying upon the earth. Glory to Jesus. The one who is maker of everyone, everybody, everything, including a plan that looks like it is impossible, like it's not going to happen in this lifetime. And everyone is mocking you. Today you are here. Tomorrow you are there. You are jumping everywhere. You belong to every click. Every, anywhere you are there. You even add yourself to other people's plans. You want to, to join someone's own dream. Forcing into it. You even envy people's dreams. People's pursuit. You want to... to, to to compete yourself with them. You don't know that not every, everybody gets to get into Potiphar's house. Nobody, not everybody gets to walk into Potiphar's house and meet Potiphar's wife and overcome. The grace that was granted Joseph to overcome the power of Jezebel, the power of, of the flesh that was thrown at him all the beauty and all i can imagine the perfume the fragrance the setup of every time that she tried she put up this wonderful scenario enticing should have been an experienced woman of high standard of high quality and i mean a captain's wife can you just imagine how many men will turn it down that sugar daddy throwing money at you hallelujah that man distracting you from your marriage, giving you attention, costing you to be, to be so, 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 so blinded by the affection that you think, oh, my husband is not giving me affection. My wife is not giving me affection. Oh, Calibaraku or Santaco. Go and tell God about it. Because the more you seek, seek for more outside. When the issue is already there, you are looking for for worldly standard worldly counsel worldly support you deep in more of the problems you are expecting the food of the womb oh but all you do is stay on this on on the internet reading stories of those you know <laughs> those that that thing that they can advise you Motivational speakers, how they did it and got away with it, or how they delve into science. We're not saying that science is wrong, wrong, but if you depend on God, count on God, God will surely open your womb. Who would have known that Rachel could have uh, bear um, Joseph and Benjamin? For all you know, she only opened, allowed her sister to come in and kept pressing on to God, kept depending and looking up to God. Knowing the promise of God that God is the one who found her on the well, by the well side. Where she went to tender to, to fetch water. And behold, a man just came up from nowhere saying that she's the wife of Jacob. The same God that brought her into that marriage, marriage would surely bless her womb at the appropriate time. Hallelujah. 
And the Bible says she openly accepted her sister. Her sister had children. Numerous of them before her. At the end of the day, she had her own children. Hallelujah. Because she allowed the will of God to, 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 to govern her life. She allowed the promise of God, the dream that God showed her, the prophecy of God over her life to dominate her fears, her shortcomings, the impossibilities that seemed like her sister was serving all the children in the world. She was just there, tending her husband's bed, and nothing was coming from it. But here we are. Her child is the one that brought the story, brought the Israelites to the to the promise of God, to the promised land of God. Hallelujah. So Joseph now finds himself in the prison. And it doesn't look like it. Still, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Le Caruba Zante. This woman has called him other names. A rapist, stigmatizing him. With so much shame, disgrace, and he did not dwell on that. He did not go and be lamenting. He did not go and stay in a corner and start saying, oh, because human beings have said it, let God say what God is saying. Look onto what is God saying about you. What is God saying about you? All he knew is that the same God that brought him out of the pit will surely Fulfill what why he has brought him into that prison. <laughs> the same God that brought him out of his brother's hands that delivered him from the hands of his brothers and pushed him into Potiphar's house. The next thing you know, he's landing in prison. What is the dream that you talked about? Are we now supposed to now go and be going back to the world because it is not forthcoming? Remember, he was 17 years old when he had his dream. Balakalakata. He was only 17. These are years later. And just one fine day, while in prison, he was even made the leader of the prison guard, the prisoners. So everywhere he was, God was on, he was on a training ground from the governor's higher mighty house, now into prison. So that situation, that location, that circumstance, that sickness, that issue. It's not for you to give up on God. It's not for you to turn and cause God. For you to now say, oh, the days are always supposed to be beautiful. Everything is supposed to be perfect all the time. No, God is saying that. I will put you in the prison like Joseph. I will put around you a tempting wife. I will give you a very beautiful wife to test, to train your, your ego. Hallelujah. God will even give you a very extravagant husband. A husband who doesn't know how to manage anything. Hallelujah. There are many things God is just... Testing you, he's just putting you. You are on a on training ground to tame your 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 patience, to bring out your virtues, to 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 mold you, to mold you into that promised woman that the community would need at old age, that would help young women when it is time. It is not for you now to start. Wearing one foot trouser with your husband, dragging him left and right because you are earning fifty-five million um, dollars in the hospital or, or, or as a nurse. Because you can take cars on credit and you can pay them, and your husband is is not able. Kumbara kalazeti. It's not for you now to to sit on the on 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 on, on the account because you are signatory to them. You are now madam. Looking after everyone else in your own family, calling your family out, your in-law families, 
calling them all sort of names. In your heart, you have placed everybody in their own position. You are, you are, they, are some, they are the ones that you favor, some that you don't even care about. No, God did not bring you into that man's life to cost that. He did not bring you into that woman's life to, to come and cause division. To place a, a, a demand on things as if you, 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 you kept in there before you came the way. Because you have built her life, because you because you sponsored her through um, uh, um, through education, through some comprehensive programs, you built her life to a certain level. So now you have become the, the CEO. You are now the one to command how she should run, you know. No, you don't even work together anymore. You don't do things together. Everyone has become king for himself. The family, how home, the children are listening to mother, the children are listening to father only. We have divided each other's. There is there is separation, even while living together. Because of alter ego. Everyone has now looked at himself and now called self. The marriage has said that two shall become one. Two have now become one. So you need the presence of God. You need constant counseling. You need constant, um, a constant revelation. There is prayer and fasting. You need to work together. You did not marry her to come and be a prayer warrior for you. God forbid that you be in a man's life because you are a believer wife. You are born again. You are this and the man is just sitting there. Mother of all the children. Why he just goes his own. Ah. You're missing out. Because in the long run. In time. It's just a matter of time. And everything will make sense to you. And it will be very very late. God forbid that it is late for anybody. In the name of Jesus. God forbid. Kalakuwa Kazaza. Hallelujah. So if God doesn't trust in us, if he doesn't correct us, if he doesn't bring you to the drawing board once again, and that you start walking in the light and not in darkness. That's the Shalonian chapter 5. He says that we are of light. We are not supposed to be walking in darkness again. Hallelujah. I think there's one and two. We are made of light. You are not let to be walking in darkness. Hallelujah. Rambo Zakata. Ivele Kumba Aliate. We are not of darkness. Let your light so shine. In that marriage, hallelujah, you are a promise to the next generation. You are a promise as a future in law, mother in law, father in law to somebody. So you are not there to 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 be to be to be a a a a a a a a a a a a statue. Hallelujah. As much as this message is taking so long, I believe that the Lord is meeting everyone at their point of desire. I believe that just as you listen, it's enough that God wants you to hear. Hallelujah. Because by now, <laughs> isn't it obvious that maybe I should have been tired and walk out of this broadcast and maybe go and Get as not even as much as we test it. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I'm coming from a 31 day fast. I believe the Lord has fortified me on that note in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
give God all the glory. Because what we go through, the tests we go through, the things that happen to us, is an inspiration. It is for a divine, it is for 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 proof. For, 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 for proning, it's for God's glory. Hallelujah. It might seem like nothing to everyone else, but it is everything to somebody that is yet to go through that or that is going through that. And you are just out there. I am just sitting here speaking to someone's exact situation right now. It's not of my knowing. It's not my business to know. It's everything God's business. Your life is God's business. Whether you like it or not, all the way from the time you were conceived. He already had a plan. He knew you were going to be on a broadcast like this. He knew I was going to be sitting here. Hallelujah. He planned this this time. So we are not going to short list, short, short change ourselves. We are going to receive of that grace and run with it. Hallelujah. Kala kuba Yes, chapter 5, verse 5 of First Thessalonians. Ye are all children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. So wherever we are, whether it is night, or whether it is day, or whether the circumstances, what or whatever the presentation of it looks like. See how Joseph had all the the, the, the reasons to 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 defy the, this matrimonial bed, to defy and betray Potiphar, but he did not because he remembered he knows that he's of light. He knows that the God who showed him the dreams, the God who has revealed Himself to him, just one encounter was enough for him to hold on to the promises of God. For him to have faith in God. That this is a big and a glaring temptation. I'm not going to sign off. Hallelujah. My company just like that. Because I have a crisis. Because uh, in the financial situation, the world is, is turning upside down. There is chaos. There is uh, uh, inflation and all of this. The only thing that God gave to you and told you that this is what I want you to run on. on. I want you to be on this orphanage. You now have gone as you say you want to close it down. But God is saying another thing. There is famine. You cannot supply any much food. Like Joseph, you turn down the offer. It might look like millions. Oh, sign of this, this building. Building where you have gathered the children, the destitutes in the streets. Those ones that were hopeless, that no, nobody could even love them. God has put you to gather them and put in a place. Now things have gotten difficult. There is drought. Hallelujah. It's a test. Potiphar's wife would have stood naked right before him, standing with all the endowments you can imagine. Standing with in front of this guy. As young and as vibrant as his hormones were jumping, he could have been He's a human being. Yes, he turned her down. How come? It's the grace of God. May somebody receive grace. Receive grace to overcome. Grace to overcome. Grace to overcome. That not my will, but Father, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Hallelujah. Le Karaboas and Teakata. Oh, why in prison? Because his master himself looked at him. I believe even till tomorrow that Potiphar did not believe his wife. But he rather save his honor as a man and take away the woman that the man that the woman was wanting going to dishonor his home again with her with him. He rather preserve God's will. And he was led by the Spirit of God to just get out Joseph from the vicinity. Of course, the will of God for him to be in the prison and serve them in the prison, serving them unto the glory of God. When it was time, 
Bible says he began to interpret dreams. <laughs> Do you know that if he was going to come short in that Potiphar's house, he would have lost the anointing of interpretation of dreams? Let us not forget that he has been interpreting his own dreams. He had never interpreted another person's dream. But he knew that he had that grace. He had that anointing. Many of us, God has called us to serve, to walk in his vineyard, to be, you know, one thing or the other, ministry. Hallelujah. But we have lost it. Now we are saving ourselves. The anointing is, is without repentance. I'd rather have the anointing and still have the Holy Spirit, the, the, the will of God. Somebody go for the chase, the salvation of God, the relationship with God. Not that you are hearing another spirit. Like King Saul that was hearing, different spirits were coming to him and saying different things. One time he wants to kill Jonathan, I mean, sorry, David. Another time he's calm, he's prophesying. So which one is which one? <laughs> so you see, God is a mystery. His mystery is, is beyond, you cannot begin to understand him. Hallelujah. So while in the prison, even then he's the head of all the all the prisoners. So much so that they had to, to, to have access to him because he was not the head of prisoners. Do you think these people would have minded him? They would have as much as come and be feeling bad with their dreams and saying, oh, we had a dream, I had this funny dream. The both of them came there together on the same day. They were sentenced to jail on the same day. The butler and the and the the the, the, the cup bearer and the and the baker. Hallelujah. They now had a dream and became so so sad. They had need. They had a need for the God of Israel. They had a need for God's for God's servants. They had a need of the gospel. They have come so broken. They are so so. They are, they are, they are bewildered. They are, they are weak. They don't have a place to tend to. They have no hope. In that hopeless place, the all you need is the power of God, the presence of God. That is what was happening to the likes of this butler and the, and baker, while in prison. Looking at David and Joseph, the head of prisoners. They now look at him. They ask them, what is going on with you people? <laughs> the Lord will always send somebody in that wilderness, in that place where you are. Child of God. That you receive the grace to hear this word and not harden your hearts. Even as the word has come to you now, the Lord has sent his word to you even today. Speaking to your hearts right now. That you should turn around and put your trust in God. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct you. He shall surely accomplish that which He has proposed for your life. Liri Akambo Zata. So Butler and and, and Becca are looking at Joseph and expecting <laughs> because every time they'll see him kneel down and pray, isn't it? They know that he's a man of God. He's probably always there, you know, doing his own thing separately from the ways of the Egyptians. Still worshipping the one and only God. Not worshipping the sun, the moon, and all of these other things that the, memory, the prisoners would have been doing. They had their books, they probably, you know, all of the Egyptian, um, 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 whatever. Glory to Jesus. 
that did not move him. When it was time for their need, they turned to the God of Joseph. Because something about Joseph was glorious. Something about him was gracious. Something about him was the presence of God, was the power of God. The love of God. He had a different, he had a countenance of, 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 of the majesty of God, of the of the of grace. Remember, in Potiphar's house, grace was with him. Potiphar said in himself that grace was in Joseph. Hallelujah. And they walk up to him and they're asking him for help. I missed all their I miss all their soothsayers, all their talisman, all their sangomas, all their altars. I miss all the unthinkable gods, countless in the Egyptian. Glory to Jesus. They came to Joseph. <laughs> that is a very powerful revelation. I miss everything. Don't forget these men are coming from Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh's author, authority. They are coming from the palace. So they have all the contacts they could get from the Chaldeans to the, to, the, to the soothsayers, to the wise men that read the stars and read the sun and read the, anything that they could read. So it was not too difficult for them to contact one of those people to come and interpret their dream for them. But something Something made them so sad. The dream that they woke up from, they were so, they were so not themselves. They were so, so, so out of their, their spirit. Their spirit was restless. Hallelujah. And they had to seek God. They had to seek the almighty God. Not the star, not the sun, not the altars, not talisman, not incantations, not um, hallelujah, not their idols by their bedsides. We have different things that we call God, different things we pray to. Some have some special kind of Bibles that have different kind of they call it with different or extra, it say it has extra, extra books and all of that. We don't know that we perish out of ignorance. The more you put God in second place, the more you put the Lord in doubt of, of faith, not having faith in God, trying to side by side him with other with other possibilities. Oh, don't get it very wrong. I have been a chematic follower. If I tell you my story, if you even go on my timeline, there are things you see there. So the Holy Spirit allowed me to give his testimony because there were times when we were in Germany, you are so tempted to denounce, denounce the faith of Christ. It is very tempting because of the, the challenges out there. It's almost like you are you you should you should believe that there is there is no God. We went, there is no research we did not do. There is nothing I did not search on internet. Internet, this internet, social media, you see, it has come to destroy you and I. Not a day did I have any dream or any revelation or anyone speak to me or any of those things we were going to look for, going to see, going to find out all of these things that are Urambo Zandia Cabo. Not one day did I sit one day and get a prayer point or a miracle or some answer. It's like putting a statue and expecting it to talk and jump and talk and greet you. Lie. There is no God beside the Almighty God. There is no God. No other God beside me. First commandment. See. <laughs> we give God the glory for His grace, for His mercy. To save us and deliver us out of the hands of the enemy and all his his tactics 
I pray for you, somebody, that you are, you receive the, the, the revelation of God. God to reveal himself to you. Because until then, you are as exposed as the atmosphere to any information that is on social media. Anything can happen to your soul. And that is it. And it will take another century because God is one minute. It's like one million years. It's one million years, like one minute. God will come back again to you. In this lifetime, let no miss, let nobody miss the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Let God reveal Himself to us. I have seen what I'm saying, I know what I've seen. I was a chemistic follower, I was an Egyptian pyramid, whatever. There is nothing we did not know. I can start telling you, I can start unfolding to you the things of the <laughs> Balaki. We, we sat for hours in Germany. One of my friends, she knows what I'm talking about. We sat for hours researching. There were times we go, I would go for nights till daybreak. I am on. There is nothing I did not search. You don't search God like that. <laughs> it takes just one scripture. John 3, 16. And you see him there. Finish. Open your spirit. Open your soul. And you see him. Go and search schematic. Go and do all of those ones. Oh, books of Moses, or whatever they call them. Search all of them. No one revelation will not have. The only thing you have are demons who infest your soul. That is all you will see. Nothing good can ever come from there. That means you have you have left the realm of your life, which you are already struggling with, to move into the realm of demons. You have already given Satan. You see, Lucifer, you have opened your the all of your soul to him. I have been there. I know what I'm saying. There were dreams that I can't imagine that I can't remember those dreams anymore. There were dreams I had. There were things you would experience in your sleep. Because you spend your time looking for something that is not looking for you. Looking for the devil. Looking for Lucifer. In the name of trying to find out subjecting God to compete God and what God created. Even the Lucifer himself, he created him. So how far? There is no place as testimony. There is no such thing as testimony in any other altar that is not the altar of God. I have been there. It's not testimony. The only thing you get is torments and more doubts and more problems. Every blessing you are calling blessing is not blessing. It's, it's more, it's, it's, you have been bought over. They are making to comfort you, to keep you in that bondage of thinking that this thing you are doing, that's not testimony. Because any good thing that you have, that you can't be proud of, you can't talk about, that you'll be criticized, you'll be, you'll be, you are exposed to some sort of, you can't really talk, you can't openly talk about it. You are living in, in, in bondage. And if even you come to talk about it, there is no peace in your life. All you talk about is hate and bitterness and problems and all every other thing that is, is against God. Anything that God is not talking about, that's what you're talking about. You are on here on social media, dragging people to hell with you. All the demons that are infested in your soul. You are calling people to come and share with you. God will, 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 will surely come to, to, to fulfill that which you are asking for. All those souls where you are deceiving. Hmm. That's another day we are going to come on that day. Joseph is in Egypt. Joseph did not bow to bow, bow to bow. Even when it was time for the glory of God to manifest, he back. When the Lord now said it is time for him to get his rank. Hallelujah. The Bible says. When he interpreted the dreams of this buckler and this one, they went back to the palace. They restored them according to the dreams 
one was restored the other was obviously you know as he said so it came to pass Joseph did not interpret his own dreams this time. He was elevated to interpret other people's dreams. And when he did that, he gave a testimony, he gave a, 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 a prophecy that you will remember me when you come out of here. Don't forget me. And that is it's as if you went and you forgot him completely. But that was the will of God. So don't think that as you have arrived in that place. Hallelujah. Don't think that because God has put you, you are now a, 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 a pastor in that church, in that place, can do Ziyakaraba. Don't think that because God has placed you there. It means that now, 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 now. You will start now ripping of the foot of, of ministry and all of that. Some people will even be doubting you. Ah, did God call you? Did God say this to you? Did God even let them be doubting? Let your work be God be, be, with God be clear. Let them say what they want to say. Some are just good at critics. Critics. If God will allow them to criticize you, to even mention you, or to even be, be, be citing you in their sermons and in their whatever. The Holy Spirit, the grace is sufficient for you. Focus on the word of God. Focus on the visions of God. Focus on what God has said. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Ilia Karabo and Yazata. Many of us have given up because of what people are saying. Because of what the other um, um, uh, men of God or some other ministry person is saying, or some pastor or some, maybe your mentor or some people that you are working with. Hallelujah. When God called you, you heard it. The Bible says in the book of First Samuel, God called him somewhere. Somewhere he did not hear, and Eli was 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 humble enough to not to not envy the call of God on Samuel's life. But many of us here, all we do is envy. All we do is expect that this should not be. How can this be? How can God be calling this kind of one? What is God? Are you sure? Ah, the kind care of that. This is what they are, they are doing. It's, 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 it's just makeup. There are strange things. People are just, you are just trying God. You don't know what God would, 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 would come to say to you, would do unto you. So we should be very careful. Trying to discourage others. Trying to, 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 to trim their wings. All you do in your platform is to talk about this person's calling. Talk about others. Trying to sabotage them. Trying to just ridicule them. Are you? Who are you? How can you how can you have such such fearlessness? What God are you serving? It is very difficult to understand it. Somebody God called you, and you have walked in that dimension from 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 grace to grace to grace to grace, and suddenly God calls other people. God has called other people. Call them, and you now sit 
according to you in your higher mighty place where you are you now say this one cannot be used by god cannot be called by god or what the anointing on the it is not correct it is fake it is makeup it is lie lie it is this it is witchcraft you'll be even asking that they should people should reject and rebuke them and abandon them how have you how have you tested that and proven that it is correct misleading others misleading so many people against somebody hmm. this is just joseph in a strange land in a strange land in in in, in egypt in the prison of egypt once upon a time he had a dream when he was 17 years old and this is him at the age of 30. the king has now had a dream the king of all of egypt so from the pit to the Potiphar's house to prison and now interpreting dreams for butler and butler and and and, and, and baker who had other options to call on soothsayers to call on these wisest men of Egypt to go and seek for other other higher mighty ministries? Kala rua bazante leki akomba atazata releki abondi azaza rikambu ali kato rachanda reyabu sete. Hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. Very ako abari andazeli ako bazanta rechatu adandi akaba. See, let me tell you. God cannot be mocked. See, you know, the one that God pick to use. <laughs> if it is not the rejected soul, if it is not the woman caught in adultery, if it is not the woman that broke the alabaster jar oh lucky in the zata lele yabo uwa tinsi abonta the bible says he abases the proud and raises the humble I had a man of God said to me, a, a, a pastor said to me, when I did a certain fast, a fast of, thank you, Holy Spirit, allow me to say, it. I did a fast of, of, um, of, of May. That was one of the private fasts, a fast of three days dry, straight up. On the first of May, I had to break this fast. The Lord led me to sell us to be among some, some people. Hmm. Because in 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 the in all humility, there is no way I will meet strangers, people who are not in Christ and are be quiet. That's how I just bless God for this grace. I cannot be quiet. All I want to speak is salvation i want to just preach glory to jesus and i began to speak and this man and his family were just carried away i don't even know what i was saying but the spirit of god as i'm fasting you are on the higher peak your spirit is on high notes right i was just the spirit of god was doing his work and these people were keen on me and i we kept on on and on i mean you know when it was time this man came to speak to me he says whatever god is trying to do with you that is his coming to me whatever you are saying here that god is i mean i don't know how someone call yourself a minister you call yourself i don't know if you understand me somebody you see understand you. you look at another person 
You are trying to you are trying to walk for God, or you are walking for God, and you say you are walking for God, and you look at a fellow person, a human being, a brethren, and you say, I don't know what God is trying to do with you. You fasting, or you are this you, it was like a testimony, it was like me preaching to you know this, and that is the comment he's saying. I just held my peace as usual. I thank God for the grace. Hallelujah. He went on and went on and on and on and on. Saying just to belittle what I had said. But the spirit of God is the spirit of truth. He has already done what he had to do. My time there was what I had to say there. It was not me that had to say it. I had to say it to these people because I was available. The Lord made me available at that point of need, at that time for those people. And they received in their heart, in their minds, in their soul, in however the Spirit of God was ministering to them. I was just a vessel and I just gave God the glory. Every time, Bukali Azambate, while you in your human and your carnal self, in your, in your very proud arrogance, idea of being a servant of god i don't know how that even works how you stand on that pulpit or how you stand on that that name you call yourself on you you even have flyers and you have different things trying to promote yourself trying to use people to promote yourself so much so that you look at the fellow and say you don't know what god is trying to do with them the bible says the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first the least of, in fact, the greatest of you amongst you is the servant. Very powerful. Jesus said it. The greatest amongst you is the one that is most, the least. The one that will be considered the least. That is the greatest. So why you are calling me? You don't know what God is doing with me. You don't know what God is doing with A or B. Whatever it is, they are just not good enough. So to say. God is already saying that you are not even in his vineyard. You are not even there. You are disqualified. You are out of league. You have no number on your, on your polo shirt. You are not in the match. You have already been written off by God. You see how Saul was rejected long before he even could even tell by himself. By the time he could actually agree to come face to face with the reality. Yeah, that is. The reality that God was already left him. It was too late. Now he was hunting for whom God has chosen. The humble one, the shepherd who was in the fields, tendering to his sheep. David. Before you know it, <laughs> Pharaoh has now dreamt. Years later, two years later, two solid years later, that is when his prophecy, his prayer, that remember me as I have interpreted your dream, Mr. Butler, remember me when you shall be restored into the palace to serve the king again. Remember me. You know that he did not remember. He did not choose not to remember. It was not God's time. It was not God's will. It is not God's time, child of God. It is not God's for moments for you yet. He did not remember him. He completely, as a matter of fact, he completely forgot him, deleted his number from his phone, blocked him from social media, did all kind of the impossible things not to have anything to remember about Joseph. That is how far God will go to show his glory desert you nobody is talking to you as a matter of fact the only thing you are hearing about yourself is the opposite of it's like somebody else that is living for you they are talking strange things you will just sit there you are asking is this me they are talking about is this you is this my family is this my children is this, this is my work is this my ministry Hey! God allowed it. 
<laughs> God allowed it. Because the deeper that pit is, the deeper, the worst, the most, the more the maggots, the bigger the manure. The more the maggots, the bigger the manure. The more fertilized it is, the ground becomes. Ah, child of God, begin to receive understanding. That that thing that you are going through, be it in that marriage, it has been a test all along. It has been a place of tarry, a place of wait for the next glory, for the next plan of God in your life, in your family, even in your children. There are times I look at this one, my boss here, and I, I used to wonder, I say, Lord, what is this one? <laughs> one cartouche that some of these boys will move for me here, I will look like this. God is training you. If you cannot be in the world there for him to train your patience, for him to train your tolerance, for him to train your, your to breathe you your tongue. Oh yes, he will use the, the pets you have in your house. He will use your children. He will use the housemaid. He will use everything available around you to speak to you, to train you, to help you, to mold you before you get before Pharaoh. Before you can go to interpret the dream of a great and mighty Pharaoh. Holy Karabo Handareya Zata. So the butler did not remember him. He forgot about him. Until it was time. Until Joseph was 30 years of age. 13 years later after he had dreamed this dream. Oh, Rakabo Zantali Karabo Zata. I don't care what the enemy has said. Oh, my Mare. Mare, grace of God, bless you, man. Thanks for joining in here. Welcome in the name of Jesus. I don't care how it looks like. Like you, like me, like Joseph, like every other one, everybody, everyone created under the sun, everything under the sun has happened before. It has happened before. Ecclesiastics say, it has, there is nothing new under the sun, child of God. So what you are going through, as long as God is aware where you are, he knows what you are going through. As you start making a commitment today, as you start laying it before him today, he will surely show you the way out. There is no greater way out than him to glorify himself. But than for you to receive that testimony. If you are not living a life of testimony, there is no life to live. The Bible says that his testimony, the testimony of God is his son, Jesus. Having to walk through the life of 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 of, of. Hallelujah, as a sacrificial lamb, he had to rise again. And whosoever shall believe, shall have eternal life. That is his testimony. Glory to Jesus. First John opens that all us all to us. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, thank you. Showing us that the greatest testimony that God has ever done, has ever given us, is the gift of salvation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, he wants us to live that life, that testimony. This is Joseph going before Pharaoh unexpected. The next thing you know, they call him, they cut his hair. The Bible says they moon his hair. They made him to look like an Egyptian. They dressed him like an Egyptian because he had the honor to meet with the Pharaoh. Pharaoh that he never ever dreamt, whether his slavery, his bondage, his prisoner, all these things, circumstances, accusation, rebuke, insult, hey, rejection, what have you. Nothing like you could ever meet Pharaoh was possible in all of his story. Look at it. <laughs> and the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. 
and in the eyes of all his servants. Do you know that in verse 32? Katsubaran Tayabu. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. <laughs> it's okay. Go oh, and put in the other one. That one is Father. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Ali Karabu and Azitaya. It's a very long video, and I pray that somebody, God, give you the grace to watch from the beginning and watch small, small. I believe that the time will be made available to you. Glory to Jesus. Because he did not keep us here for all these hours for us to miss out on this word. They are not my words. They are not your words. They are the words that the Lord wants us to hear to edify us, to bring us to that, to that, you know, a response to many things that we may be having facing in life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Even myself, I'm edified, I'm teaching myself. I don't even know from the things I say, I don't know where they come from. God is speaking to me equally, to you and I. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. what we're just saying now chapter 40 verse 40 but think of think on me when it shall be well with you and show kindness i pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto pharaoh and bring me out of this house bring me out of this prison but it was not his will that was in a play it is not him that put himself in that place. So the one who put him there, who allowed him to go through that, <laughs> it was not his time. So Mr. Butler went and did not remember him. Glory to Jesus. I pray thee, remember me when you shall be restored. Many people who have helped Many people you have supported, many things you have done for people, and now you say, ah, I will not be good to anybody again. Do you know that it's not you that chose to be good to those people? It's God's grace. And you will not stop being good to people because of somebody. Because some people have turned their backs, some people did not show appreciation. It doesn't stop the gift of God in your life. The promise of God in your life. It doesn't change you as a matter of fact, you will even try to be to be to be selfish or to be wicked or not to be to care about people, to not cancel, to not support them, to not, you know, be there in the time of need. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 15. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And there also, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me in this dungeon. Do you hear? He's beckoning the, the butler that please. I am a Hebrew. I don't know how I even got here. I did nothing wrong to be in this dungeon. Please remember me when you get to the palace. And I missed... At this point, all of these wonderful prayers. Sometimes you will pray, you will pray and pray. In fact, you will fast and speak in tongues for all you can. For all that the Spirit of God will still lead you. But until the time of God is perfect. Hallelujah. Until that time is every other thing that is going on. Is fortifying you, is training, is maturity, is growth, is chiseling you, is cutting off the, the, the impurity, the, 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 the hallelujah, the blemish is wiping them all off. 
Bikalu kuwaraba zende ya kuza. So that by the time he announces you, Kukaliba, the things that he has prepared on those platforms, on those areas, those, those, that wife, that husband, those children, Lekata Ubarande Zeka. You need that maturity. Hallelujah. To walk in that dream. Joseph needed that maturity to walk in that, that realm of the glory. See how they describe him. Hey, Rikaba. Renda Isakabo. Ralabu Kandize Akata. See how Pharaoh describes him. When he is now invited before Pharaoh. Kunarabaya. Hmm. Chapter 41 verse 12 And there was there with us A young man, a Hebrew An Hebrew Servant to the captain of the guard and we told him, and he interpreted us our dreams. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret. Me, he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. And obviously, he was sent, hallelujah, sent for, 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 for Joseph. Eli <laughs> Karia Kambazuta. So verse 37 of chapter 41 And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh And in the eyes of all his servants And Pharaoh said unto his servants Can we find such one as this is? Hmm. This is where God wants us to be Whether you are a minister Whether you are a singer whether whatever ministry that God has called you, you know that even being a parent at your home, doing nothing and maybe just training, you are babysitting for your friends, maybe, I don't know, many things that you are doing with so much passion. That is ministry. See, the man, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh is a human being, he's a man, but he's king, he has authority, he has, he has the seal of 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 kingship hallelujah kalazu tarabanda and pharaoh said unto his and, and and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as oh let's finish verse 38 and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this is A man in whom the spirit of God is. Pharaoh is asking all of his officers, all of his officials, all of the, the people, everybody concerned in the palace put together. All of the wise men, all of the counselors, all of the chindas, as you call them, all of them, all of those great people who have come with him from, maybe they have said the previous pharaohs, all of them, in fact, commanders in chief, prime ministers, Kinda Aria Kozala, Pharaoh, put the question out to them. Verse 38 of Genesis 41. 
can we find can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of god is Why? Because he gave a solution. He gave a rundown of every program, every how they they are working about. The, in fact, everything that has to take place in the next fourteen years in Egypt, by the reason of the anointing, by the office, by the the leading of the Holy Spirit. So it is now recognized in him that he has the Spirit of God. Not the anointing. Oh, lucky Ziabo Takara. By the humility. By the faith. By the maturity. The grace. That is what is showing. That is what is. That is what Pharaoh saw. Pharaoh saw the scars. Pharaoh could look at Joseph and see. See through. That this is the one, this is the one that God has prepared for this work. This is the one that God has brought to my palace. Even the enemy knows the plan and the, the power of God governing your life. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the most high. Abide it under the shadow. That shadow, when the enemy comes, he sees the shadow. Oh, yes. So Pharaoh could transcend, can look at Joseph and tell that is one. Nobody needed to tell him. He is made of God. He is the one for the job. He is the man for this, for this program. First of all, he asked the question, is there any of you can any of you fit in the shoes that Joseph has just described here? <laughs> when the Lord, when God wants to embarrass your enemies, even embarrass you and join amongst those that said that it is over for you. Those that said that it shall not be where we do that. In fact, nothing can ever be about you. In fact, you cannot even talk. You don't have a voice. Those that shut you up. But because you did not stay in that pit. Because you chose to trust God. Who put you, who made that pit possible? Because those are the impossibilities of God. He makes it impossible for man. But it is all possible because he made it impossible for man. Kinder la kubazata. No. Human beings cannot put it together. As much as you should not even have a voice. You should not look like anything. You should not have a family. You shouldn't have you shouldn't marry. You shouldn't have a you shouldn't have a car. You shouldn't drive. Hallelujah. You should not have an opinion. Glory to Jesus.
and the evidence of things not seen. That is where Joseph is. As for your circumstance, it is saying that it is over. As for that sickness, they have already written you, they have already bought a coffin. They have said, in fact, doctor's report says you have three days to live, five months to live. I come to bring you the good news that the evidence of things not seen, the faithful God. Is going to meet you and deliver you, save you, restore you, bring you out of that dungeon and put you on the glory of his name because you are his testimony. You are there because of his testimony. Somebody. Hallelujah. This is Joseph. Announced by the king that this is a man with the spirit of God in him. Is there anyone that can wear the shoes? These shoes that are open, void, 14 years. We are looking at 14 years of, 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 of possible, the greatest history of Egypt going to happen. And Joseph is at the center of it. Do you know? You are the center of that door. You are the one, the key holder of that door, that grace in your community. Do you know you are the you are the you are the next Joseph? Do you know you are the Joseph of your father's house? Huh. Mm. Do you know you are the Joseph of your marriage? Hallelujah. If Joseph was not in Egypt, God's will, God's timing of this famine. Hallelujah. God's timing for this famine to happen within this, this age.
about your mother's house. All those altars fighting you, your sisters, your siblings, everything that has been going on way end. And God is showing you. God is revealing to you. God is opening them to you. God is showing you, calling you, bringing you to intercede, to scatter those altars until you come into that place. The story continues like that. These things will continue to happen the way it's happening. There will be a continuous setback, continuous. You know, the lineage, what your father did, that you will do too. What your mother was, that you will also become. That goes about that generational causes. Hey, are you not seeing? Look at look at the, the chronology. Look at the, 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 the follow up. Because I can't do so bad that. Enmity here and there. Disunity up and down. Hallelujah. God has called you. Come and stand as a point of contact. That is what Joseph was. He had to leave his father's house. He had to travel to a place that he didn't even know he was going to travel. He didn't know how, how to be a slave, what, I, what it means to be a slave. He was a favorite in his father's house. Now he is tendering as a, a head man in, in, a, in, in a captain's house. Soon enough, the wife wants to destroy his life. God removes him from there and dumps him again in the prison. Hallelujah. And that is how the Lord wants to glorify himself in your life. That is why he has called you. That is why he keeps speaking to you. That is why he keeps showing you those dreams. That is why he keeps revealing this, this, these things to you. About even some, some, your neighbor, someone next to you that who is going through some very strange stuff that you are aware. Maybe they come to you every time. They're asking for counsel, asking for advice. Maybe she runs to you for refuge. You don't know what God is saying until you start doing things for others, until you start being a shoulder to lean on. Joseph had to go to save the whole of Egypt. Imagine, and the neighboring countries, every country was going to depend on Egypt. And this is how he was decorated, they were bowing to him. See where the dream finally is coming to pass. Not only his family's house. So the stars that were bowing to him, you know, you cannot count the stars. The whole of Egypt bowed to him. The only person that will not bow to, to him is Pharaoh. He is. In fact, verse 44 says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. How do you begin to understand that? How do you begin to put that together? It will never make sense to the ordinary man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will take the presence of God. Le carabo zante. It takes the spirit of God. For, for, for that testimony to come to be. If not, you see yourself, you dream yourself, flying plane. You are in a, a, a Gabon. Maybe you saw yourself with the president of America. Sign. Of course, you will come to means that you, you will meet great and mighty people. People that would, 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 that you are meant to meet. You are meant, destined for greatness. But you sit there, you are not seeking God. You are not staying in the realm of God, you are not asking God for direction. Those dreams will remain in your pillow on the bed. Hallelujah. But Joseph allowed the will of God to carry him, the plan of God to send him out. His father sent him. He was not there to argue and say, oh, my brothers hate me. I don't want to go there. Ah, kada, complaining and all of that. He carried himself. What the code that the brothers know that it is hurting them the most. That is the coat he wore. That's who, in fact, that's the coat he wears every day. The favorite coat of many colors. So that when they saw him, they got even more angry. 
and they stripped him of the coats. They even pronounced him dead. They threw him away in the pits. Hallelujah. But God himself sent the same them again, brought them out, sold him to Egypt. Kata, kata, bukata, karaba, sata, kata. And here he is, bearing the honor of Pharaoh. The whole of Egypt bowing to him. And those same brothers show up. <laughs> they Pharaoh himself was the one who sought a wife for him, sought a family for him. He even had children. He bore men. He bore woman. He bore both. He he a happy man. Away from his father's house, he did not mean bad to. He did not. Now he saw the purpose of God because he put God first. Even when he walked into the presence of Pharaoh, Pharaoh was asked, expecting him to bow to him. He did not bow. He said he bowed to no man except his God. Such, such loyalty. Hallelujah. God only had to remember his dream and bring his dream to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And in chapter 45, hallelujah. In chapter 45, we'll just fast forward to chapter 45 where he reveals his identity. The brother was went now hungry. Famine has hit the whole of Israel. Canaan, everywhere, people are looking for food. Hallelujah. All they have to do is go to Egypt. And as they found themselves there, one after the other, different events happen. He tried to trick them and play up them until eventually he revealed himself to them. They were already bowing to him before he even revealed himself to them. And God sent me before you, verse 7, says, God sent me before you. Chapter 45, verse 4. And Joseph said, said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Hmm. In chapter 4, 44, they already bowed to him. Kalara Zata. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that he sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. So when you are walking with God in that in that revelation, when the plan of God is above your own plan, if you do not begin to subject yourself to the challenges and all of this, you know, setbacks that come every now and then, the glory of God cannot be seen like this. See how Joseph is able to proclaim the glory of God, to declare. Psalms 21, 22 says that I will declare. Hallelujah. Their greatness before the brethren. I will proclaim your goodness. I will proclaim your majesty. How great are thou, O God. Hallelujah. They said they shouldn't be grieved. They shouldn't be upset. They shouldn't blame themselves because they were feeling guilty. They were feeling terrible. 
This is somebody they have written off. And now the table of the Lord, he said, I will set the table before you right in the presence of your enemies. See how God would, I will anoint your head with oil. Hallelujah. Until your cup will run over. Your cup must run over. I pray for you, somebody that as you have tarried and you have waited on the Lord to proclaim his goodness over your life, that you will surely, you will surely sit on that table. Hallelujah. You shall sit on the table that the Lord has set before them. Before they that said it was over for you. They that even threw you in the pits. They that called you a nobody. Hallelujah. Verse 7 he says, And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by the great deliverance. Can you imagine? See humility. It took the years of training. It took the years of waiting. It took the years of patience. It took the years of different challenges that came at him. Glory to Jesus. 13 years. If God had told him that he was going to go through all of that, I'm sure he'll still be in his father's house by now. <laughs> I'm sure till now Joseph will still be there, saying that you wait, procrastinate, I will go next time. God has been showing you, telling you, go, go and put your documents, go and write this concu, go and go now, go and try. Go, you failed before. Go and try again. You said, no. I am. I will go next time. You keep procrastinating. Until when time has finished. You will now sit and say, I want to go now. The grace, the anointing for all of those times, those things have God has found somebody else to do this. God has sent somebody else. That is the thing with God. He will choose another. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 19 and verse 14. The Pharisees were there shouting. Now say, stop these disciples from shouting. They are disturbing. Why are they shouting? Hosanna, Hosanna everywhere. In verse 38. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord Jesus, Jesus told them that if they don't shout, the stones, eh? the stones, these stones like this that you see on the ground, they will stand and praise me. I am all powerful like that. So all it is, is about God's glory. If it is not glorifying God, if it does not have the peace of God in it, if it is not in, in tolerance, in long suffering, and still having the joy of the Holy Spirit, still comforting you because He is the grace that will walk you through it. And until the finish line, which is His expected end, that plan is not going to go anywhere. We are out of His way. Hallelujah. I know that. In as much as many enemies have been has have been caused, many things have happened that has cost you, you know, so 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 much has been 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 infiltrated into your heart that so much so that you even have bitterness, hate, and even develop some sort of mental glory to Jesus, mental struggle. Because of something that you have gone through. Because of a pit that you were thrown into. Because of Potiphar's house that you found yourself in. Because of that circumstance or the other. Because of that challenge. Because of that sickness. Because of that financial circumstance. Glory to Jesus. Because of that accident. Hallelujah. Because that, that unfruitfulness in your marriage, that barrenness 
Hallelujah. It has caused you to receive some kind of stigma. There is a name that follows you. There are, in fact, your home, your heart has become a habitation for demons of different kinds of all legions of hell have been set loose over your life. Hallelujah. Even you find yourself on some altars of different sorts of gods that you now tend to because you couldn't have been patient with what God is doing in your life. Because that situation, that, that, that place that you found yourself in, it was a transit. It was a transit. It's a place of transit. That difficult moment was transit. It's transit. It is not forever. It's a matter of time. The next border flight will come as you will not stop on your way to Africa. Maybe you want to go to Cameroon. You take a flight from Paris and you get to Turkey. You have to transit the plane. You reach there. Then it's three hours time. You get on the next flight. You say, eh, hey, hey. You stay there and sleep there. They are calling flight going to, 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 to Cameroon. Flight to area. Flight to US. Next transit flight boarding in five minutes, in 15 minutes, in three years, in two years, in one year. It doesn't matter how long it takes. That is transit. God has a plan for the flight to come and you definitely get there. It will get you on that flight. You will be put on that flight. You will not miss that flight in Jesus' name. Somebody said, I will not miss my flight. I will not miss my flight. I will not remain on this transit. I will not leave, remain in this pit. This pit is not the destination. This is not the promise of God. This is not where God said he is not. His plan is not for evil, but of good. He has said in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13, that I would seek him. And that is what I will do. This is not his plan for me. Hallelujah. So by the time you are in that transit, child of God, expect a flight. It will be boring to sit there. You don't have a newspaper to read. You don't have a book maybe to turn over. You don't have some the, um, um, internet. Maybe you don't have something to keep you busy. It's taking so much long time. There will even be a delay. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit saying that. There will be a delay. Delay flight. They will say the flight is coming in the next MMM. Um, um, the flight is not even cancelled. Tomorrow they will see what they will do. Delay. It's not denial. It is not the end. Delay does not mean God has forgotten the case or the dream that he showed you has changed or the promise he has or the flight is boarding you to the planes will not, there are no longer planes that will carry you to that place. The enemy will try to forsake you, to show you, to show you, giving you reasons that you have been forsaken. God has forgotten you here. Oh, God does not exist. He will bring you new ideas, new stories of Rakali Wabazante Kiyabo Takara. Some of us, even God will answer your prayer, give you what you wanted so much. You take it now and slide back to the world. Kinder Abu Ziti. That is not why he answered the prayer. He answered the prayer to the next level. And if he was delaying that prayer to answer it, you would have thought that he was not his wicked. God doesn't want to give you. But because you've not had a training, that is why he will keep you there. He will hold you up. He will train you. He will teach you how to appreciate his blessings, his purpose, his plan, his to be inspired, to inspire others, to help others, to teach, to give your life, to give that your experience to somebody, to many. So sometimes he will tarry those prayer points, those um, requests. He will keep it. Because you will not know how to manage it when he answers you. You are asking for millions. The one that they should, they should sign you this, um, this loan in the bank. You want to open this social and so business. God knows that if the money enters your hand, that is it. Your salvation is finished. You are back to, the, to life to the world. 
God knows that if he is looking at, he can already see future from the end. He is the beginning and the end. He knows what will happen to you. So why they mock at you? Oh, you have not built your 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 your, your house. You have not eh? you have not married. You have not had ten children by now. Oh, you cannot bear your foot is your womb is empty. God knows why so if you are not in his presence this is a time to begin to find him seek him jeremiah 29 11 12 he says that you will call unto me and i will answer you i will hearken unto your need i will answer you this is the story of joseph if joseph did not allow himself for the will of god to prevail the word of God to prevail over his life. What is God saying? God is moving. You are moving with God. What God is doing, you are moving. The transit is a transit. The next flight is according to the, the forecast. You don't want to come on a plane and the plane will go and crash there. They said the winds are too tough. They are very, uh, 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 what do they call this word again? Torrential land, I don't know these words. Who is, who is, all this my my airlines here, who should help me? There are great winds in the wind. Hallelujah. They say there is a delay flight. You are there impatient. You now get on the public transport and you say you must get there. You must go there by shortcuts. You cut the way. You say you are helping God. You got it. After all, is it not the same place I'm going to? No, it's not the same place. That is not the route that God wants for you to pass through. It's not the same destination. The destination comes with the process. The process is 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 <laughs> the blending. The chiseling of the Holy Spirit. The teaching you. The molding you. The, the in fact. So that when you pick that microphone, you get on that pulpit. He's said today in the book of Acts chapter 2, tarry in Jerusalem until the Spirit. The Holy Ghost shall come from on high. Hallelujah. Don't leave Jerusalem until the time is right. Until I send the Holy Ghost. You have no business Living this Jerusalem, all of you, none of you wants to, wants to live here. Only 120 of them. Hallelujah. Kira kabo azante ya kabo. Lekari ya bo zente ya kadabo azonta. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tari. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Glory to Jesus. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Not many days hence. Not many days. So it doesn't matter how long it will take for them. You tarry here, that is the commandment. You stay here and wait for the promise. You don't go and be pomposing and go and be showing that you are disciples of Jesus. You are you know the word of God. You have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You have read the Bible 50 times. You have seen the encounters. You have even met Jesus face to face, even in your <laughs> Jesus even lives in your living room. That is not what he has said. When you pick your 
breath upon me, everything that comes back to life, and I go from glory to glory. Your neighbor, here is your neighbor. And verse 6 of Acts chapter 1, when they, they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? <laughs> Just imagine going to ask God, God, when will I live? How long will I live for? If he says tomorrow, will you live? Will you not even die before tomorrow? <laughs> that is how, how mystery, the mysteries of God is. It is not for you to know. Verse 7, he says, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. It is not for you to know your future. God knows it. Have faith. Put your life in the hands of God. Depend on him. Let his mystery, let his glory begin to sway you from the will to to, 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 to the why. Hallelujah. Kiria Kabo Zata. Because if you know, there will be no need. You won't even move. You will just sit there. Glory to Jesus. Why did he give this reason? What was the will? What was the plan for this? The plan for this is in verse 8. He said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. King Daku Kabazata, 120 people. Especially the 12 of them, which 11 of them. Hallelujah. So all we can do is to work our salvation with fear and trembling for the purpose, for the will, for the expected end. That expected end that he talked about in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 is expected end. His plans are good and not for evil. So even when the evil days come, even as much as it looks like it's not looking like anything like the promise of God, that is when the power of God is most at work. When you are in the pit, when it is impossible, that is when his power comes through. When you cannot stand from that hospital bed, when they have written you off, when the doctor has said it is over, this cancer is incurable. And inviting you to come for leukemia and what they are giving you all of this. You say, my God did not say this. He said by his tribes, I am healed. You sit there and you challenge him and you say, God, I know that after this, if I enter this lab, they say from now to this, are, doctors are good, don't get me wrong. They are in the power of God. It's God who created them. Science is under the will of God, the power of God. He made all the plants and everything that we use. So, glory to Jesus. But he did not say that it's the plant, the, 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 God heals. God heals. The doctors cure. There are many things that are incurable. But God heals all things, all sickness, all, all hearts, every, every condition, he heals it. I have seen the mercies of God. By his mercy, the day that believe, to day that have received this Holy Spirit, the power of God. Power shall be what? Power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you have power. And ye shall be witnesses. That was the plan of God. To be witnesses. Unto me. So unto the glory of God. You did not become witness for yourself. You did not go and be ministry because of you. It's not because you are too beautiful. You are too eloquent. You know the scriptures very well. Because you have been in ministry for the past 20 years. So nobody should ever be anointed except you. You are the one that is superman. God cannot use other people. God cannot work with. Well, God has said, all of you are called to serve. The greatest amongst you is the servant. Can you believe it? So that is the plan of God, child of God. For you to receive this Holy Spirit. For you to receive the power. 
Glory to Jesus. Receive the power and be witnesses. <laughs> and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto uttermost parts of the earth. I wasn't there. But here we are talking about the same God. This is exactly what happened. 2,000 years ago in the upper room, the Yakarewa Bulls and Taya. And they obey the tarot in chapter 2. We begin to see how the Holy Spirit came down. Hallelujah. So it takes obedience. As you stay in that place of torment, that strange, you know, impossible situation. God keeps speaking to you. As you keep looking at the word, you keep fellowshipping. You keep creating, building your relationship further, stronger. With the Holy Spirit. Tell me which man, which woman will come and stand in front of you and begin to magnify something else that you don't know anything about. You don't know about them. What you know about is what God is saying. <laughs> That's what happened to Joseph. When Potiphar's wife is coming and offering herself to him and say, Come and let us go and we'll do carnal things. Come and let us go to the world. Those people that are calling you, let us go and backslide. When God has Removed you from there. Set you to be a light for them. Rather you choose to go back. Instead of you for them to transform you. For you to transform them with your light. They transform you. Which is not. It is error. Glory to Jesus. So Joseph could not. Could not imagine. Hallelujah. To bring down the name of God like that. In a land that had nothing to do with God. All the whole of Egypt. They don't know, hallelujah. All they know is moon, star, and talisman, gold. They will wear their God here, put their God near their bed. That is what is happening in, in, in the, the Egyptians. I've seen it. I've read it. I've searched it. I was almost talked on that way on. <laughs> I've already spoken about that one. Glory to Jesus. So we see. It is all about the Holy Spirit, all about the fire, all about the power of God, all about the peace, the joy, the life of God, the resurrection power that rose Christ from the grave. Because that is the promise. You will tarry. Tarry here because without that promise, you cannot hold on. You cannot be revealed. The Bible says in, in, in Daniel, as we saw earlier, 2.22, that the mystery things, the secret things he will reveal to you. Who reveals it? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. So that is your inheritance. Glory to Jesus. So I pray for you, somebody, that you will learn to allow God's plan, God's will, God's purpose. Hallelujah. We allow the plan of God. To surmount, to surpass our own thoughts, our own plans. Glory to Jesus. Proverbs chapter 4, as the Holy Spirit is telling me. Glory to Jesus. Oh, chapter 3, sorry. Thank you, Father. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Hmm. Verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Hmm. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Karaku Abazanta. That is a benediction. Glory to God for his grace that has come to us today. His word, his, his, his undiluted truth and nothing but the truth. To have brought us all out here, kept us all these hours. I don't even know how long this is. Five hours and five. This is the longest ever. I think the Lord is taking me from, <laughs> from the, from his, in fact, 
I am almost speechless, but I appreciate the grace. I appreciate this, this the, 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 the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. To sit here and just and ju I just allow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God to do that which he wants to do in you, in me, in all of us. And if those that get to watch this later, that same anointing as it is recorded, hallelujah, so you receive it in the name of Jesus. In that situation, in that circumstance, in that health issue, glory to Jesus, as the Spirit leads you, as you hear it in your heart, don't hesitate to inbox me. You can write to me. Glory to Jesus. And the Lord shall perfect that which he has started in the name of Jesus. And if you are here, if you have not received, you have not received Christ into your life, glory to Jesus. Here is that chance the Lord has been knocking at your heart. Glory to Jesus. That circumstance has made you to go back to the world where, you know, you were once upon a time you were in that, you know, in the will and the purpose of God. And it is still his will continuing. Just like Joseph was in the well. Glory to Jesus. In the pit, sorry. Not even his brothers would have thought that they would see him in chapter 45 of Genesis. They didn't believe that they would ever set eyes on him. But that was for the will of God to come to pass. So for you to be connected on this broadcast right now, it's not by your making. It's the will of God. It is the plan of God to restore you, to save, to deliver. Glory to Jesus. To heal you. Hallelujah. You shall never be the same again. Glory to Jesus. So if you have not said that prayer and you're probably on the fence or you're not sure, oh, what am I talking about? What is salvation? What is she blabbing all about? Glory to Jesus. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. Even when you're there, you're seeing that all of this is not a waste of time, is stupidity to you. The waste of God are foolishness to the one that is in the world. And I pray for you that you receive the wisdom of God today and come into the realm that he's inviting you into because he has called you here for that purpose which he wants to manifest his, his glory in your life. Hallelujah. That is why he has preserved you. He has kept you. I missed all odds. I missed everything, every setback from low to high, high to low. Each things that have been happening to you and lay cabo. Even all the questions you've been asking yourself, you've been, you know, you don't know where to turn to, but you feel like you are in charge. The Lord is saying that today as he's knocking at the door of your heart, harden not your heart that you should turn around and receive that grace of salvation. Hallelujah. So if you've not said this prayer, it is your turn. It is your time now to be restored unto the promise and the will of God. Hallelujah. Which are his commandments, which are his, his love, his peace, his joy, his righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Eternal life, according to John 3, 16, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, hallelujah, shall believe in him, hallelujah, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Oh, what an amazing grace. What a great revelation. Hallelujah. So if you're here and to the glory of God by divine invitation, because like I always say, and I know you are not here by yourself, even if you're ghost watching, as I know there are I have hundreds of ghost watchers, you know. I, I, I just know it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So you get on board and receive the gift of salvation today. And the Lord will perfect, settle you, and establish you again by his will in the name of Jesus. So if you are here, you place your hand on your forehead, on your chest, and most especially, I would recommend your chest. The Lord Jesus. I come into your presence. I know that I'm a sinner. 
I repent of all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Cleanse me and make me whole again. Come into my life and be the master of my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Take over my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. Thank you for resurrecting for me for the justification of my soul. Thank you for sitting at the right hand of the Father for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. If you have said this prayer, you are welcome to the body of Christ. As a matter of fact, there is so much joy in heaven right now because you have received Christ in your life. This is the best ever decision you've ever made. And the Lord begins to walk with you from now on, even if you were past, gone back to the world, you have been restored. Hallelujah. You are no longer walking in condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is no longer condemnation over you. You are now be called unto the glory. Unto the children of God. You are now a child of God. Hallelujah. You are a manifestation of the power and the presence of God over the surface of the earth. You walk in dominion and in authority by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Be baptized right now in the Holy Ghost. If you said this prayer, receive the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in your heart, your soul, your body, your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, receive the anointing of the tongues. And as you open your mouth and begin to speak now, every utterance, let the Holy Spirit give you utterance, give you the utterance. And as you begin to blab and speak, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we saw in the book of Acts chapter 1, glory to Jesus. Verse 8, now you are a witness of God, of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus. So stay in his presence, his word becomes now the foundation of your life in every realm, in every dimension, in every how, anyhow it is, whatever situation, you are never forsaken. You walk in the light because the light of God is upon you. Hallelujah. His glory shines through you. Hallelujah. His peace and his love continue to abide in you. Most especially his grace will see you through glory to Jesus. It is not meant to be a male a life of um of um of 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 of, of bed of roses as they call it <laughs> hallelujah but you walk in the assurance of the blessed assurance of christ jesus from glory to glory even amidst every temptation every tribulation glory to jesus glory to jesus you will receive the fruits of the spirit of god hallelujah according to the book of galatians chapter 5 you can just feast on the New Testament books of John, Luke, Mark. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, we come to the end of this time in the physical and not in the spirit because the spirit of God is upon us and we are witnesses. We can never be apart physically and um, spiritually. The Spirit of God is our fellowship in the name of the Holy Ghost, the Son, and the Father. Be with you all now and even forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord cause his grace and all the peace that surpass all understanding continue to abide and run and about you. Don't panic. Don't be in fear. Fear is no longer your portion because sin has been broken away from you. You are no longer walking in fear, but you are walking in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I leave you right now as your sister, your friend, your fellow compatriot, your, your mother, your auntie, hallelujah, and most importantly, your fellow citizen of heaven. Glory to Jesus. God, take all the glory. Take all the glory, Father. Take all the glory. So take all the glory, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name.
till I come your way again. It's your sister Nicole. Shalom, shalom, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Kalatu abazante ibi akia kuzambara levata utoko abaza. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Zikandi ibi takura mukanda lipizi libata kukulu bara dabaze. Labuku ata ambizi akutu bara libakazo livada izikinda buku ata dabaze dabaze libazi tiki tabu kuada dabaze tali basi kiti libatei 